Hello. Let's turn the time rider down. Welcome to the show, folks. This is the Saturday morning world building stream where we build Saturday mornings. No, wait. Uh, uh, Reborn Blue Haze. Thank you for the sub, Reborn. Two months in a row, A+. Plus. Jace97, thank you for the sub. These things, it's, we're in a crazy place right now where we, we, like a whole bunch of people three months ago, a whole bunch of people three months ago, and really ever since then, have been gifted subs. Where to CAD? Thank you very much. Uh, and so our sub count fluctuates wildly as, the, as those people gifted subs a month, a month they, they expire. Uh, and so it's, it's tough for us to keep a, get a sense of like, our sub count is definitely growing, which is super cool. Because uh, it means we can do great stuff like uh, hire, hire uh, a full-time artist, which uh, we're about to do. Sulu244, three months in a row, thank you, Mr. 244. Beauregard Nanners, those are the best kind of Nanners, I think we can all agree. Uh, so, how much time do you spend on hair each day? Um, you know, what is this? Is this five minutes, ten seconds? I don't know. Um, yeah, somebody, William Allen, during the la last, during the last, and perhaps final, last game win stream, gave us like a hundred bucks, which is crazy. Knighthood Wolf! Thank you for the sub. Um, yeah, that in heart, uh, you'll notice, you'll notice the presence of the in-house art director, because we'll be able to just generate a lot of art. We'll be able to do stuff, hey, it's Arthqueef, isn't it late for you, Arthqueef? What will the artist be doing? Well, uh, fr frankly, Tempest1140, the artist is gonna be, uh, my Buckman Master! Thank you! Music Man 798 thank you. I had a question. I think it's just braids in wavetable mode. Um, uh, the, the artist is going to be drawing a lot of stuff. Although it can, can't be over... It can't be... Uh, that, that's overstated. He has a, he'll have a lot of art to do, don't get me wrong. But his value is not just as an artist. It's also he's the guy that did all the 3D modeling for the dragons. He's going to be doing all the 3D modeling for our future stuff. Um, our future miniatures. And... He's also going to be our outsourcing um, art director because we had to communicate with all these artists to get the book done and none of us in-house are artists. And the difference between us having to go back and forth with an artist trying to tweak what Steve Voss, thank you for the bits, BITOR AND THE SNOW DOG! Thank you for the sub. Thank you for the bits, Boku Wowni. This is, this is, uh, you know, bits keep, it doesn't matter how many, bits keep the doors open and the lights on. And the, you know, having somebody like our friend on board who can literally just take what, take the rough that the outsourced artist, the, the freelance artist did and go, no, no, like this, draw, 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 draw. They go, oh, I get it. Oh my God, it's a huge difference. And it'll also let us do stuff like, I hope every week, it'd be nice if we could, we did the stream, we do a stream on the week, during the weeknight, I'm not gonna say which weeknight yet, stand by but we're getting very close to it. <laughs> You'll get a video next week announcing it. Uh, and then each week, each like maybe over the weekend or whatever, release a piece of art. It might just, it'll probably just be black and white, grayscale piece of art that is a moment from the stream. I think that would be really cool. Um, so, Chewing Gum 999, thank you very much for coming by the stream. I hope you have a good time. Of course you love D&D. It's the most fun you can have with your brain. Um, no, Colin Ginger, I don't have a cold. Uh, it's just early in the morning and I haven't started. Have, this is the the first thing, these are the, the first talkings I've done during the day. And also I was here um, the last couple days. I've been either, I've been working, which requires a lot of communication, then streaming at night, and then doing that over and over again. It's kind of wearing on my voice a little bit, I think. Um, Baconator! Thank you for the sub. I remember your last sub. Thank you very much. So, um, will we get art for the party and characters? Yeah, already done. Already done, and done by this artist. The art you're gonna see, the art you're gonna see for the heroes, is done by the guy that we're hiring. Um, I did see that Zetasophos, which I believe is a. I want to think that's a Led Zeppelin reference. I thought it was pretty remarkable. Um, will you ever have the artist stream on here making art? Well, I think that'd be a great idea, but that's gonna be up to him. He's very much not on social media. Um, Lovan, one, two, three, four. Thank you for the subs three months in a row. Oh my goodness, that makes me so happy. Um, can we get a sneak peek at the character art? No. No. So, um, is there anybody else in the office? Not at the moment, although Mr. Schmuck may be coming by to help us out with something. Uh, Charisma Save! That's a great name. Thank you very much for the gifted sub to Mr. Cluckers. 
Logan Battlebred. I'm sorry. Sir, Sir Clucker subscribed. Anyway, you get it. Christmas save to Logan Battlebred. Look at all those bits. Isn't the NetHack stream fun, Nightly Elf? We're not doing that right now, obviously. Obviously. Mr. Simulation, welcome back. Uh, so let's get to the business of things because I want to make sure that we actually... Do any characters wear heavy armor? I don't think so, actually. What do you think of Dragonlance? I quite like Dragonlance when I read it. I've never gone back to it because I don't know if I would like it again, but it's a mistake to imagine that because you loved something when you were 12 and you do not love it when you're 32 or 42, that therefore it has some kind of failing. I don't believe that. I think that it's perfectly reasonable to like something when you're 12 and uh, be crazy in love with it and not like it when you're older. There are five players in the game. Um, is this campaign going to start in a pub? No, it starts outside a church. Why are you calling your city capital? Where did that name come from? Why not something more similar to the way real cities are named? That's incredibly so. But intro mate 123, that is how real cities are named. Real There are places like uh, Torpenhow Hill. Torpenhow Hill is a, is a word that means hill, 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 hill. Isn't that silly? That doesn't seem... That person obviously didn't do enough research and didn't consider the way things are really named. No, actually, that's how things are named. There will be... A, the capital is a proper word, like Matthew, in the setting right now, and it means this one city. And in about a thousand years, everywhere in the world, instead of the calling it the seat of the barony, which is what they do now, like if you go to Bedegar Keep, they will just say, go to Bedegar. There's a town called Bedegar. Bedegar Keep is the seat of the barony or the seat of the duchy uh, or the high seat or the high city. These are the terms that they use to mean capital. They don't use capital to mean, but they will because of this city, because of this city's fame. Arsqueef, you don't have to sub, but we pretty appreciate it. Um, so there, there's not the, the River Avon. The River Avon is literally called the River River. What? Come on. Can't you do better than that? Terrible game design. Terrible world design. River River. Uh, but indeed, that is how things are named. Uh, Extra Leg says, you mentioned you listen to no such thing as a fish. Of course. How can you not? I ran deep. What? Wait. What? Wait. What did you say, Extra Legs? Extra Legs. You have said something that has shaken me to my core. You mentioned you listen to no such thing as a fish. I ran D&D for some of those guys over the summer and did the dealing in tomb. They loved it. That, 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 that. I'm gonna, I have, we have to stop streaming, everybody. So, I don't know which of those guys you mean, although I can sort of kind of guess. Skinny Dangus too. thank you for the sub. Uh, so, we have work to do today, by the way. Bmatulev, thank you for the sub. Don't forget, those of you who have Amazon Prime, you get a free Twitch Prime sub. You have to link your Amazon account to your Twitch account, but you get, oh, hey, by the way, did I tell you guys, um, did I tell you guys, uh, I have not, CA Barelitz, because I've been busy getting the stream ready. I've got a whole, I've got a whole, um, uh, Syra card, thank you for the sub. YYZ, welcome back, Professor Zed. Rumi, Rumi, Rumi. Hello, Rumi, Rumi, Rumi. Um, I don't know, Steve Voss. I'm not 100% sure. That's Arsqueef's emote that he made for us. That is Tarna. Um, uh, what the hell were we talking about? Um, how much character role playing do you think your character players will do minimal minimal my players these players well actually tom well like tom hardly ever speaks in character uh he's he's a very shy person <laughs> but uh that's that's uh, well, shy is maybe not the right word he's just a very inward person but tom i think is going to do a lot of role playing i think anna's going to do a lot of role playing and i think i'm hoping that we can get phil to if we can get phil to be half the role player on that side of the screen that he is when he's dungeon mastering, you're going to see some remarkable shit happen because he is unbelievable as a dungeon master when it comes to playing NPCs and it feels like you've got Jim Henson's creature shop on the other side of the thing. I'm like, where is that character? Where are you? Where is that Phil when you're playing in my game? And he's like, I don't know. I just feel weird acting out when I'm a player. When I'm a DM, I feel like I have this obligation to do it. Um, uh, correct. And the fifth player is Lars. Uh, and, and I would say also Lars is probably not somebody who's going to spend a lot of time speaking in character. They, he, these people, they all have very highly developed ideas of who their characters are. Raupin94, thank you for the sub three months in a row. A plus. Hail Satan. Um, they all have highly developed ideas of who their characters are. And they will make sure their characters behave in character. But when it comes to speaking in character, that's not something that's really up their, up their alley. Um, I'm going to switch the audio, by the way. Yeah, role-playing doesn't... Role-playing, by the way, is that a Sophos. Role-playing doesn't really have anything to do with speaking in character. Uh, role-playing is just deciding what your character... I think role-playing is really just deciding what your character would do. That's all. As long as you're deciding what your character would do and your character changes over time, then you're role-playing, right? 
Um, and it's those, it, speaking in character is not, not required and not, often not even, like a lot of people are terrible at it. Um, I'm gonna go to my standby modular playlist. All the music you're gonna be hearing is, almost all of it is made by modular synthesis. Um, and that will keep me sane. Let's see, where is, I guess I want desktop audio. There we go. Let me turn it down a little bit. It's supposed to be background music. So I don't know what the subject of the stream is today, other than we're gonna be talking about capital. Um, so like Anna plays in the OD, in OD and D game, which is Matt O'Driscoll. Um, uh, Matt O'Driscoll, an artist friend of ours, my friend Wes, whom some of you may remember from last, from code names, and Anna, and she does a ton of role playing there because the group is different. The group dynamic is very different. Lars and Phil are very serious players. Like they wanna play, they wanna win, they wanna play by the rules, right? And that I think intimidates some other people. Um, hello, <laughs> welcome back, Krimty. Um, so what are we talking about today? Uh, this is the capital stream. Let's, let's switch to the actual stuff. Um, I have, I have vague ideas of what we're going to do today. I sort of on purpose avoided trying to, um, get too into the weeds. MQ1B, M MQ1B, MQ1B, welcome aboard three times, three months in a row. Giddy Scribble. I like that name. Giddy Scribble. Um, so I deliberately tried to keep my options open when it came to what we're going to do today because I didn't want to, I didn't want, like, we're at the stage where the things that need to happen are not necessarily the same as the things I want to do, if that makes sense. So, um, and I've just got a ton of stuff I have to get ready. Oh, I forgot something, by the way. By the way, there's, we have an announcement, I guess. Um, stupid Ranger, I don't think, I don't, I don't think you're a stupid Ranger. I think you're a great Ranger. Hey, Matt Colville, you made a video about the first session, but what about a session zero? I have yet to, uh, I have yet to figure out how to have a, have, have a session before the first session, because then that becomes the first session. So, uh, Aridos, I think we can, I think as a good policy, we, we, we avoid trying to make references to uh, the players or the Dungeon Master's physical appearance, either positive or negative. Uh, oh, I keep forgetting. Um, casual Cactus. The, the spirit of your comment is taken. I appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I, it would be, it would be, it's, it's, uh, the hair is the exception. We were actually having a, we were having a discussion about this for uh, chat purposes and moderation. And I was like, listen, if people want to talk about the way we look, either positive or negative, they're going to get, they're going to be told, come on with that. That's not, that's not appropriate. Uh, the exception has to be the hair because the hair has sort of become part of the brand. So, Tank Ram, thank you for the sub. We have, yeah, I think we're going to get a little bit down there, Hon, Hon, Hon Ganos, Professor Ganos, Dr. Ganos. No, I have not played Overwatch in a long time. I, the, my, my experience with Overwatch was we were all playing Rocket League and Rocket League was amazing. One of the highlights of my gaming life and I've been playing video games since 1977, um, maybe 79. And um, oh God, Rocket League was so much fun. Everyone I knew was playing and we were playing all the time. And then Overwatch came out and we started playing Overwatch and for some reason, like, Rocket League was, ah, 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 and then we got into Overwatch, and at least the people I was playing with were suddenly like, um, I need somebody to put down a teleport pad over here. And then there'd be silence, and so we would say, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll put down the pad. Okay, it's it's down. And I was like, why is this, what, what, I don't, this is, oh. And so at least the people I was playing with were not, were not, were not fun to play. Uh, storage Lord, Storage Lord. We're not fun to play Overwatch with, so. I did Blackjack 41, that was pretty astonishing. Um, so, uh, what the hell are we talking about? Oh, the, the announcement. Um, yeah, uh, satisfying sandwich, it's very satisfying. Dr. Lover Lover, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Lover Lover, that's a great name. That sounds almost like a Venture Brothers character. Um, I have not played League of Legends in a while. I sort of fell out of that game. And I had been, my friends and I played League of Legends almost like, uh, like we had to swear the vow. And the vow, the vow was we do not begin games of League of Legends after midnight because otherwise we'd be up till three in the morning. 
Uh, and all the friends of mine, like, it started because a friend of mine was trying to apply at Riot. And you had to play the game and you had to have a character of a certain level to apply there. And so he got us all into it. And then everybody, all those people I played with, all went and worked at Riot. They all got jobs there. I, was, I already had a job. So uh, th that kind of put the kibosh on it. Um, that's a good question, Inkstain85. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet. We'll get there. Uh, so yeah, no, I think Arsqueef, you actually know what the announcement is. It's all we're doing is we've got now, if you are a subscriber, we now have a subscriber-only channel in the Discord. Um, so if you, if you, if you, exclamation point Discord. You link to the Discord. Glorious Segfault, welcome back. Uh, so there is now, it's a, it's a, a publicly viewable, publicly viewable, channel so anybody can see it but only people well I already did the discord thing that's right you gotta scroll up a little bit um, now if you've subbed I would say in the last 12 hours which means all the people subbing right now it can take a little while for I think like I think they only sync once every day um, but after the stream I'll try to make a note I think I can force it to sync. Um, we're kind of new to this so if you sub right now and you go to the discord you'll be able to see the sub only um, channel but you won't be able to chat in it until everything syncs up, which will do semi-regular. Um, and it's just something we've done because um, it's we want to make sure that people who support the channel feel like they get something out of it. And also, I believe it's I believe that the, the, the anytime anytime you have to jump through some hoops to get into a given community, th that community then tends to require less moderation. If you get what I mean. Uh, the quality of the just the qual and it gives people who are in chat a place to go when the, there's no stream happening. Now we already have a public live stream channel. Right? We already have a public live stream channel, uh, and this is going to be one that's for subscriber subscribers. Only. So we'll see what happens. There's if you hit exclamation point playlist, you'll get a link to this batch. You'll get a link to this this um, you get a link to this. This basically sold me on the on this module, by the way. DM Cat Hatch or Cat Hatch. Thank you for the sub three months in a row. Rev Buster, go bust some revs. Thank you for the sub. Jess Conrad, two months in a row. The Panther, thank you for the sub. Um, I'm glad Rev Buster. That makes me happy. There's a lot of positivity in this community. All right. So let's let's switch the um, let's switch to I guess the game stream. Ah! Oh, thank God, we survived. So I was, I'm now facing the opposite direction. Tuning in from South Africa. Hello, South Africa. Um, I have no idea. I I don't have any Von Bardis, so I don't have to worry about them. Transmute. Uh, so let's uh, turn on display capture. There we go. You should all recognize this. Can we actually hear this up there? Yeah. And then where's the... There we go. Um... What are we working on? I'm not 100%. Sure, stand by. Let's, I'm actually going to turn this down a little bit. This, this audio, you guys should be complaining about how loud the audio is. Actually, let's... That's a little better, and then let's turn this up a little bit. I have to be careful, because my audio controls actually also affect, because it's desktop audio. All right. Tal Draken asks a question. How do you go about making custom classes for your players? Tal Draken probably knows. I think anything regarding the stream is, is fair game in this conversation even if it's not literally regarding capital. One of the players has um, a custom class that I made from scratch for them. They were planning on making a class with an obscure specialization. And we were talking about that specialization, and the player said, well, you know, I want to be, be a character that does this. And I was like, what? Wait, what? You're what? And they said, this, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, holy crap. And I didn't realize why they were playing, why they wanted this specific obscure class specialization. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm going to make it. That is too badass an idea. I am going to make a class just for you with its own specializations and everything. Spells and unique spells that I made up. And um, so the way I do it is 
I just go, first of all, I start with as a similar as possible a class, or I say it's like these two classes kind of mashed up, and I literally go into Excel and I make charts of what those classes get at each level. So it's already, this is already written down somewhere, but I'm recapitulating it. I'm literally going through and going, okay, because for me, the act of writing it down, even though it's already written down, right? Couldn't I just look in the player's handbook? Yes. Even though it's already written down, the act of me writing it down again helps fix it in my mind, helps put it in the cognition bucket where I'm now thinking about it. And then I go through and I write out, I read each ability. Now I've written down what abilities I get at each level. And I make another list down below and I say, here is each ability. What does, I'm gonna pick like a, a cleric is not one of the classes. So I'll say channel divinity. And I'll just say in my own words what that does. I'm not, I'm not copying down, I'm, I'm, I'm translating it, which means I have to understand it. So I read what the ability does and I go, well, what is that? That's basically you get this or you get these every this day, right? And now I feel like I understand what does the class get at which levels, and now it's time for me to start replacing those things and go, okay, what's my version of this? What's something that's about the same power level? Okay, this is a thing that, give, that enhances senses or whatever. Okay, let's give them a, a sense, anyway, that kind of thing. And so it starts with just doing a deep dive into, an ex, into the existing classes rewriting them in my own words so that now I understand them and they're in the forefront of my mind. And I can, I can, now that they're in there, I can start taking things apart and putting them around. And then I start writing, and then you do it over and over and over again until eventually, and it, take, it took me probably a week, of, a solid week of work to design this class, spread out over like three weeks. So does that make sense? Does that sound useful? Does, I don't know if that's, um, and it, it helps, it helps, um, I think that's probably accurate, Nightly F, distill out the fluff, I'm not interested in the fluff, find the skeleton, and then, re and then rebuild that. And that also helps, that helps keep it, um, that helps with game balance. So, you know, other people have already balanced the game, so if I do a modestly good idea, good, good job, if I do a modestly good job keeping things in line with each other, then I shouldn't have to do a lot of game balance. Now, that's not, that's not true. Uh, there's actually quite a lot, and you'll see. It's, it's, it's uh, ant underscore r. This is a quiet point in the song. It'll get louder. So what are we talking about today? This is the map of capital. Um, the, uh, each little, so for those of you joining the stream for the first time, only, seven, only 17 minutes since we went live. Actually, a little bit more, I guess. Trigonometron, thank you for the sub three months in a row. Von Kempf. Thank you for the sub. Zymaj! Thank you for the sub. Uh, DM Keth, I remember when you subbed last time. Thank you for the sub. I have, I have no idea, Omniscient Ginger. Uh, uh, Lox Artist, as soon as we're streaming, as soon as we're streaming, you can hit, you'll be able to, you'll be able to read the custom Dread Pirate Gill! Welcome aboard. Uh, as soon as we start streaming, you'll be able to see, as soon as we announce who's playing what, which you'll get to see, you'll be able to go on Twitch and hit exclamation point name of the class and get the PDF of the class and all its abilities. I've also modified the Ranger somewhat substantively. Um, I, haven't re I haven't redesigned it from scratch. I've just swapped out a bunch of powers and said, instead of you getting this, you get this. Instead of you getting this, you get this. And I may continue to do that after we start playing. I just wanted to get enough done that the player playing the Beastmaster Ranger could do their thing. And um, that player is pretty happy with the results. Um, nope, it's not in a volcanic caldera as far as I know. So... Shorty Mac 09, well, let's do some world building so that your first time here, that you don't feel like it's been wasted. So, uh, so let's see. Um, this is the map of capital, and each of these little uh, boxes, each of these little regions is a neighborhood. Each colored area is a district. Each black circle is a power center. A power center is an abstract concept. It's just some, it can be any number of things. It could even be something purely, purely symbolic. Uh, but holding it gives you authority. Or in some cases, actual real power. Holy crap, Seraphim 20 subs! Oh my goodness. Holy crap. Holy crap, Seraphim 333. Thank you very much. Oh my goodness. It's somewhat overwhelming to me to see that kind of generosity happen. Um, somebody asked a question and I got distracted. Have we met all the players? Well, the only, the only player... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, well, if you watch the old streams... 
it's all it's many of those people plus Newton. So Phil's the only person Phil's the only person that's not been part of last game wins, and that's only because it's on Tuesday nights and he's a family guy and he can't be out every night of the week. Um, is the Discord now sub only? What? No, no. There is a channel in the Discord which there's. It's, this is we've got fifteen thousand people in that Discord. It's one of the largest and most popular tabletop discords period and it's growing all the time and it's an i think an incredibly supportive and cool community largely self-regulating and now there's just of all the channels there's one channel that's just for subscribers and honestly i think the number one thing about it is going to mean when people are done chatting here during a live stream they can just go continue the conversation in the discord also eventually once we launch the stream it would be nice if we eventually got popular enough that actual chat was kind of crazy, all right? The sub-only Discord is going to give people a place to, <gasps> excuse me, go have a reasonable conversation while this chat's going crazy. Um, Tyler Santanelli, thank you for the sub. Once again, thank you for Seraphim333 saying, Ricky Lake, wow, Ricky Lake is here. Awesome. Um, well, you know, I think, I, I think Pesto Enthusiast, it can definitely be like, when something crazy happens in the live stream and you see thousands of people all cheering as a result, that's fucking cool, man. That's awesome. So yeah, you can't just kind of have a conversation and messages go by really quickly. But at the same time, you know, if you're in a stadium and something amazing happens and everybody stands up and cheers, doesn't that feel amazing? So I think that's the equivalent. I think we can't condemn Twitch chat too much. Um, when are the Kickstarter going to be distributed, Ram Ramglion? Well, Ramglion, if you haven't already gotten an email so that you can get your PDF, then there is a problem because that part has already gone out. But in fact, um, the miniatures are already, or at least 10,000 of them, are already at the... Um, are already, the first 10,000 or whatever, a bunch of them are already at the warehouse. They've already been made and shipped, and I think that's round one, and I think there's only two rounds. So uh, we're just going to wait for the book to get printed, which we have no idea how long it's going to take. There's our new year kind of screwed us a little bit, because our printer has offices in America and offices in China, so we got hit with our new year, and we got hit with Chinese new year. And so that's going to push stuff off, I think. We don't know. Uh, we're still at the pre-flight phase. There's nothing we can do. There's nobody here in the office that can do anything at this point to make anything happen with the Kickstarter. We've all done our part. And now we're just waiting for the people we partner with to manufacture these things to get all their stuff to the warehouse and then our warehousing to ship it out. So we're, we're in the same boat you folks are in where we just sit and wait and see how long it takes. And that's going to be an important learning process for the next Kickstarter so that we can schedule things and announce things better. Um... So, you know, is Strongholds and Followers done? Absolutely, it's done. Yeah, it's done. You can read it right now. You can go to our store and buy the PDF and download it and start reading it. Um, no, Dr. Lover Lover, we're not going to have, uh, and I don't think so, Logan Battlebred. No, the miniatures are Kickstarter exclusive, but we're going to make more miniatures. Definitely going to make more miniatures. Um, so what are we talking about? So here we are, and there's a lot left to do, right? Um... We already know what all these different power centers are, right? And we know who controls them. You know what? Let me, let me zoop a little bit here. And actually, let me, actually, here we go. We can go, there we go. And that lets us, it's funny that I can do this from inside OBS. Um, Anger Worm, I don't know. The answer is not necessarily yes. I think we're going to go to PAX Unplugged. Demography, we've talked about the demography. I think we could probably do a little bit more with this. What's left to do? Districts, streets, and neighborhoods. Um, which we may do a little bit of today. Uh, sh stores, shops, services, organizations. We need to know about the language of capital. What the language of capital we mean is, in fact, let me, uh, this is about to become an, an R-rated an stream. Stand by. So for like, the, in fact, let's make a tab here. We're not going to, we're not going to do it right now. Um, when someone in capital says, uh, so, uh, when someone in capital says, holy shit, Motherfucker. God damn it. What are the Riohan 
Sorry, standby. And in fact, let's let's zoom in on this so it's a little bit bigger. There we go. So when these are phrases, I did a lot of work on this in my novels to kind of come up with because I wanted characters. I want to be able to. I want to be able to have characters speak in a modern, plausible, believable cadence. And that means I need to understand what their versions of some of these things are because they would never say these things. These things, we, they, they don't have, they don't have um, our um, cultural biases. You know, this is not like, for instance, holy shit and goddammit, this is not, a, these guys are not, no one, these are not a Christian society. They don't have those kind of minced oaths or stuff like that. Um, and we're not going to do that right now. But that's what I mean when we talk about the um, thing of stuff. Um, they, they have the same, same impulses. They just use different phrases for it. Uh, I agree. That's, yeah, a, f a fusion. Est, uh, Mara, Ma Mara Ma Fox. Thank you for the subs, Mara Ma Fox. Levi 762, thank you. Um, yeah, shit, shit's pretty universal. I think, actually, let's, in fact. Here we go. We already, we already fi finished some of this. Um, so I think what we're going to do is let's drill down a little bit on some of these guys. So... Who, let's find out about House Alvaro. I don't know. So this, just to give you some context, I think these world building streams are only going to be uh, like an hour or 90 minutes long. Um, and that's, I think, been true so far. Yeah, Pigfucker is a, Pigfucker is pretty good. They say Black Gods. Wait, what is, how do you pronounce that? Mo, mo, mule, mules get, mules get, muzzles, muzzle get, muzzle. Mm. Thank you very much for the subs. If I could pronounce your name, I would feel less stupid. Um, well, so Ban Brent asked a good question. Would you change things like goodbye? I might. I might. There's a friend of mine who has started saying, who for some reason has started saying bless randomly. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Where did that come from? Their answer was, oh, it's a meme. And I'm like, that's not, that's not an answer to the question. And so when he says that, I start saying things like, God be with you. <laughs> right? Um, do you bite your thumb at me, sir? That's actually pretty appropriate. Um, so we want to know, thank you for the sub, Thyrig, Templar's Bane, three months in a row. Eventually we're going to see a four months in a row, and that's going to really make me happy. Yeah, this is not even really a patch, WM54. This is a live performance. This is a dude mixing, playing this live. Um, so who are these guys? So the, this is one of the major factions, and we know which uh, region they occupy. Right, they are the blue guys. In fact, let's copy this and paste it over here. Uh, so, House Navarre, these are probably the um, Joss Conrad. Thank you for the gift. Can you make a Tarna a god? That does not seem appropriate. Maybe, maybe in the maybe in uh, Vanagar, she might be like a hero. Yeah, Crimpty, I think I think only once a day does Twitch resync everything, but we may be able to force it to sync after the stream. We'll see. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, somebody correctly. Uh, it's House Alvaro is what I'm looking for. Here we go.
So House Alvaro controls the, in fact, what are their power centers? I'm just out of curiosity. They control the cathedral, they control the hospital, they control the great manor houses. All right, so let's make, let's see if we can't make some actual pro progress. Um, so this is almost certainly the, um, the great cathedral. Actually, they're the university? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Um, right, they're not, wait, they're not the church? Did we, did we change something? Stand by. Okay, no, they're, they're definitely the university. That makes me happy. Um, so they have a church? Come back here. The fact, that I have, the fact that I have zoomed this in to make it easier for you to read is making it hard for me to navigate around. I apologize. So what is their... Um, uh, let's see, what are the gods of capital? Gods and saints of Rioja. Look at that, a well-indexed hard drive is DM's best friend. Um, so these guys have a cathedral in their, uh, we're I'm just gonna figure out what their power centers are. That is a useful thing to do. Uh, they have a cathedral in here, and but they are not the number one uh, most powerful church. So it's not going to be a church to St. Isabella and probably not even a saint to one of her, a, a, ch a church to anyone else. Uh, here we go, so probably not. So Lord Anso is the god of nobility, has many saints, a saint, saint of charity, a uh, saint of duty. Ambition. And, wait, no, wait, hang on a minute. Where's the Saint Isabel? There we go. Oh, we have, um, need, need some text here. Need some text here. And so I missed uh, Saint Isabella. Ditto. Needs, need some text here. Just so my uh, things. What are you guys talking about? So, house, what are you guys talking about? Oh, I copied the wrong power centers. Okay, stand by. Correct. Theater, university, and great manor houses. Stand by. Let's delete these. Oops. All right. Okay, so minor detour. Minor detour. Nobody freak out. So they have a theater, they have a university, they have the university, they have the Imperial University. Which it contains many colleges, and they have uh, the you know they have the um, they have the what's the what's the what's the word manor house what's their the estate the estate which is also going to be like a little tiny city unto itself probably um, it's possible that people live and work on this estate and rarely leave it um, and can we. Can we, um, excuse me, is there a, can I, what happens if I, there's not a way, this is not Excel, and so my formatting options are somewhat limited. Um, no, actually, you're kind of getting here at the beginning. Yeah, it's, well, uh, it's, um, it's more like, um, you know, it's, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's got uh, several buildings, and they're all connected, and it's a wall, just like a gated community. Uh, campus is a, is a good example. I, you know, I tend to ignore a lot of those people, but Krog! Thank you for the sub. Brandy, no K, thanks. Thank you for two months in a row. Everest Magnus, thank you for the sub. I think Compound Villa. Villa actually is probably pretty accurate. Um, this is a, a capital. Rioja is kind of a mashup of Spain and Italy in two different medieval eras. So we can't get, uh, we can't get too... We can't get too noodly and too obsessed about whether or not this word or this phrase is appropriate to one or the other because this is neither of those places. It is inspired by them. Um, so I want to know a little bit more about House Alvaro. I want to know a little bit more about the university. So um, let's talk about the Imperial University. Uh, the Imperial University is their version of like Oxford or Cambridge. So let's just look up Oxford University. This is, this is how I do world building. These are, it's um, my friend Ken Height 
said there is no setting, there's no fantasy setting that is ever going to be as interesting as the real world. Uh, people just don't know how cool the real world is because they don't read a lot of history. Um, and I'm not Ken Height, so I, in fact, I think he's got a, um, a setting that they've, they're working on and, and updating constantly, which is set in the real world, which is pretty cool. But um, I like having my own, my own world so that I, I'm the authority on it. I think that's probably one of the main reasons people make their own settings is because they, they want to have a world that they're the, they're the number one expert on. It's a very common fear among dungeon masters who are like, I don't want to run Forgotten Realms or whatever because one of my players has read all the novels and they know more about it than me. I get that, but I would the easy thing to do in that instance is just change something big and major, like out of the gate, so that people know, like, this is my version of the Forgotten Realms. And whatever knowledge you have, it may be useful, but it may not. I hope that makes sense. Well, I mean, what's going let's so what is going on at the Alvara estate that would make it a power center for everything, for everyone else? Um, I, I have no idea. You know, like, you know, the, you know what's going on in Washington, D.C. that would make it worth somebody else conquering? I have no idea. Um, I'm, and in fact, that's not something I'm really worried about. I think we can take the diplomacy analogy too far. Do you worry, do you worry about your players not being familiar with your world? No, because I try to keep things small and bounded for them, typically when I run. And when they arrive in Capital, none of them are from Capital, so they should be like, what's this place? That, that makes sense. Um, so let's look up what does the Wikipedia have to say about Oxford University. So this is the important part, right? Oxford and I don't know if most people are aware of this, but Oxford University is made up of 38 different colleges and a range of academic departments and different divisions, right? Each college is a self-governing institution within the university. Each controls its own membership and has its own internal structure and activities, right? The a university is not one, one big school. It's a collection of lots of different schools. Uh, uh, Oxford does not have a main campus. Its buildings and facilities are scattered throughout the city, right? This is our, this is our template. Uh, So we're not going to come up with 38 different colleges, but I would like to know what some of the colleges are, right? Um, I'd like to know what some of them are. And in fact, um, I, one of the things I'd like to know is what is this, so you guys can see my mouse, I think, here. Um, what is this? That's what the College of Statescraft is one of them. Um, what is this area called? And in fact, Let's, so, I don't know. What is this district called? This is not a question for chat, by the way. I'm going to sit here and figure out. I'm going to sit here and figure out what. So, let's imagine I took, so. Let's look at, what does Oxford mean? I'm pretty sure it means the bridge over the, over a river. City on the Thames, Oxonia, that's interesting, Medieval Latin, that's interesting, uh, but where, where does the word come from? This is actually something that it's not telling me, let's go to dictionary.com. Because uh, I just want to kind of figure out, like, Oxford's also a, like a city. It's kind of annoying that I'm not getting... Right. 1580 to 1590 named after Oxford, the city in South Oxfordshire. Makes sense? 
Uh, you could ask the Oxford Dictionary. Ah, I get it. Literally, literally, right. So that makes sense. So we can imagine that before this city was here, there were rivers, some of whom might be, um, some of whom, some of which might be now built over or gone, or even, or even part of the sewer system. So let's look up what is, uh, I'm just, I'm just noodling around. I'm not, I, this is, this is a lot of, I feel like earlier world building streams have spoiled this. A lot of my world building is dead ends where I sit there and I might spend an hour and a half or two hours trying to noodle on a world or um, trying to figure out a, a word, trying to noodle on a word or figure out what this thing is going to be called and never being happy with it. So unfortunately, that's the nature of the beast. So like... Um, Let's see. Um, so let me see. I'm trying to think if I were being kind of, you know, what's... So like, what's Italian for ox, right? What's Italian for bridge? And really what I want is I want the medieval Italian for, which is always really tough, coming up with stuff like that. Um, <laughs> no, need to, no need to shout, parlez you? Yeah, I can see, I, I looked it up, pont. So like, bu, I think is, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. So something like bu pont, um, Let's see, let's, let's look up Etruscan. Etruscan Dictionary, that's a good, that's a good idea. Uh, I'm not sure we're gonna get there with this. Uh, this is gonna be tricky. Yeah, Crimpty, I'm the same way. I translate, I, I, I go to different, I, uh, uh, do you have a France analog? Uh, somewhere in Vasloria, yeah. Sort of, quasi. I think grade is basically my France analog. Um, so we're, by, no, by no means are we done. So, so what is this uh, district called? But then I might see what happens is words change over time. Um, Locks artist, I don't even understand that question. Don't underestimate my ignorance. Uh, you'll never go broke underestimating my ignorance. Uh, yeah, S G T R W, like Blue Point. You know, the Riohans speak common, right? I wish they didn't, but Dungeons and Dragons doesn't have a robust language system. So something like Blue Point actually makes sense, right? Something, you know. So at one point in the past, it, w it might have been called Bupont or, or even like Boypont uh, or something like that, right? But over time, and that might have been, you know, back when Rioja had its own more distinct culture than it does now, then the Kalian Empire conquers everything. Everyone speaks Kalian, which is common. And they, so the Riojans still, they, they don't know, no one knows their original, this is D&D, &D, right? D&D, &D, um, you know, the people who live in this part of the Forgotten Realms, the humans that live over here and the humans that live over here all speak common. So my version of that is, is Kalian, the Kalian Empire. And uh, no, uh, I haven't, like, although a calendar was a, is, is definitely a good idea. 
But I sort of want to learn, I, I, I feel like if I can just f drill down on this one district and figure out about it and about House Alvaro and drill down on that and really get to understand who these guys are, if that's successful, then I have created a template for all of the different houses and that'll be fun. Um, and we may not, we may do more stuff today. Um, yeah, I think actually Red William, but that's how things, that's how, that's, that, that's how things work. That's how names change over time. You know, like, um, like w w there, if, the more you study language, the more you see how words permute as people say them, people overhear them, people misunderstand them, the misunderstandings become normal, all sorts of things change over time. So you sort of have to, I, I enjoy, so to give you a canonical example, and I think this is going to be useful for some people, we'll see. Um, literally the first thing I did when I was hired as the lead writer at Turtle Rock Studios working on Evolve, was, the first task I was given was to name the planet that the game took place on. Actually, originally, it, was, it took place on four different planets, and I'm the dude that put the bullet in the head of that idea, because I was like, four different planets, and they're like, yeah, you go from one to another. And I said, does that mean you're going to have four entirely different ecologies, and creatures on one planet aren't going to be found on the other? And they were like, no, we're not doing that. I said, okay, so it's one planet. And they're like, yeah, let's keep let's keep it to one planet. That way we can have like the Arctic version of this animal, the this you know the desert version of this animal, but they're the same animal. Thank you for the sub, Anzu ninety three. Um, and so I started thinking about okay, what's and I asked my boss, who's going to be in the D and D stream. I said, um, you know, what kind of what kind of stuff do you like? And that was a long conversation. But he's like, I like Arrakis. That's a cool name for a world. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not just going to sit down and just come up with cool names for worlds. I'm actually going to sit there and think about. I'm gonna do some research. How did Frank Herbert come up with Arrakis? Well, it comes from the, uh, it comes from Arabic, al, al, al rakir or al rakis, which means the dancer, because it dances, the light dances in the sky. And I was like, cool. So he figured out what the real name for this place was. And then he sort of imagined how that name would change and permute over thousands of years. Let me do the same thing. So we imagined that there were different, different, eras on this alien planet of settlement and that the first people who broke ground here were I think Chinese and the Chinese space agency or whatever um, found this planet and cultivated on purpose to sell it to somebody else that's part of the that's part of the process of this these world building um, tech, uh, companies is they don't I don't want to be in charge of the bureaucracy of running a colony that's crazy I just want to make all the money so we're gonna take this world we're gonna terraform it or whatever and then once it's ready for settlement we're gonna sell it to somebody else so I was like what's what's the Chinese word for world like planet and a friend of mine who is Chinese, there were a lot of options, but one of them was um, Shirje. And wrote it out for me. I was like, Shirje, okay, that's cool, Shirje. And I'm probably mispronouncing it. But I liked the idea that when the, when the English-speaking people showed up and there was this handoff, they would hear the Chinese workers, the Chinese employees, the Chinese engineers, using this word, Shirje, meaning get, we're going to go down to the planet. We're going to go down to the planet, right? And they would hear this and they would think it was a proper name. And so Shirje became Shear, right? And uh, Mr. A Comet. And so that was the name of the planet. I went and pitched it to Phil. It was the first. I, I didn't give him a list of options. I just said, what about Shear? And he's like, that's cool. That's a cool name for a planet. Where does that come from? And I say, blah, blah, blah. And I give him the rundown. He goes, that is fucking cool. Now, I think a naive person might say, well, how is anybody ever going to know that? How is a player ever going to know that? I'm like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how they know it, it it's, it's a, there's a great interview with, uh, this is the stream, folks, this is what you pay for. Um, there's a great interview with Mobius talking about working with Jodorowsky on the never produced 1974 abandoned version of Dune, the movie. And this is the first movie Mobius had ever worked on, and Jodorowsky is a surrealist. That's the thing, people like that dude and they don't really understand, he is a surrealist. Mistled, mistled, thank you very much for the sub. And he's like, so what are the Harkonnen costumes supposed to look like? Like, what do Harkonnens look like? What's their thing? And Jodorowsky's like, doesn't matter. Just make something up. And Moby's like, that's not how things work, bro. You can't just say, just make something up. Artists need boundaries to create. And Jodorowsky's like, well, then come up with a fucking boundary. What are you talking to me for? You're the artist. And he's like, God damn it. That's not how, you, that you, I need some direction. You're the director. And they're in Mobius's study and there's art books everywhere. And Jodorowsky says, it doesn't, look, watch. And he grabs a random book and slams it on the table and opens it up. He goes, there, that's what the Harkonnens look like. And Mobius had this flash, of, it was a book of Titian's art. 
and, and it was it, Mobius had this flash of insight, and he's like, "Oh my God, he's right." It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where we start. It's the it's the journey. It's what we do next. We can start anywhere. You can start anywhere. It's where you go and end up that, that matters. But you have to start somewhere, right? You need something. You need something. And just I think for me at least, imagining words from whole cloth, you know, I I don't believe in those words when we're done with it. I personally don't. You may, and there are a lot of people that like settings with characters in them like flume, and I'm like, whatever with that. Come on, man. Uh, so for me, that notion of, well, how is the player ever going to know this? So like, I needed to know it so I could get to sheer. <laughs> in order to get here, I need. This is my process, right? That's the. You guys remember the Nick Meyer story, right? We were directing David Warner on Time After Time. David, great, great ridiculous movie about Jack the Ripper stealing a time machine and H.G. Wells having to follow him into the future and David Warner beating himself up right before every take terrified he was going to forget his lines and being kind of an asshole to everybody anytime someone would try to talk to him he would be like fuck off I'm trying to remember my lines and eventually Nick Meyer who was having a hard time working with the guy and kind of speaking for the cast and crew were like David you never miss a line bro you never forget a line. What are you working yourself up for? What do you turn? You're, you're getting yourself into a frenzy, terrified you're going to forget a line, but you never forget a line. Relax. You don't have to beat yourself up. And he says, and and he, David Warner, the actor, turns to the director and says, "Well, then that's the process, isn't it? Right? Meaning, meaning me working myself up is how is the reason <laughs> that I don't forget my lines. I'm I'm an artist. Don't fuck with the process. It produces results. So I don't worry about things like how are the players ever going to know that this place was once viewpoint, meaning literally bridge for oxen or oxen crossing might be another way. And then it turned into blue point. But people just call it the blues. And in fact, a nobleman, as a result, is called a blue blood. That's why a nobleman is called a blue blood. Right? That's why. This is a phrase we have in the real world. But here's how, here's why in, here's why in capital, here's why, and probably everywhere in the world now, a blue blood is, is a nobleman or somebody who puts on those kinds of airs, right? Why? Well, because Blue Point, and there are probably still people who call it Blue Point, right? Academics and stuff like that. But that, people who just are, I'm, I'm short on time, they call it the blues. Up, I live up in the blues, right? And people don't hear the Elton John song in their head because these people don't have that. And I don't worry about stuff like that. If I come up with a phrase or a term that evokes some modern popular thing, I don't worry about that over much. Because after you've played in my game for a little while, and when I say a little while, it might only be 15 minutes of dealing with these folks and dealing with the blues and how do we get to the blues, suddenly it stops being, right? Does that make sense? It stops being this thing from the real world and starts just being where they live. Or they might call it like Blue Hill or something like that. Um, so. And I do that all the time. There's a god in my setting, the god of the elves. The god who created the elves is named Val. And that's where, in my world, that's where the words valiant and valorous uh, come from. So, so that's what this district is called. Chewing Gum 999, thank you for the sub. How do you make shops? I just make up shops. Hello, Adam Gardens. Hello. Uh, actually, Daskland, yeah, it, what, that Daskland asked uh, a good question. Do you think this method also makes it easier to improv? Because you have a strong idea of its origin. Yes. Yeah. Like, all that work I did to get to Sheer, for instance, meant that later on when people asked me other questions, I could be like, well, originally this was a Chinese, the Chinese companies, and I knew the name of the Chinese company, and so we could put little really old and faded Chinese signs around the world and stuff like that to show there are different layers. So yeah, you never know when when that work you did. We, we, we have no idea when, in fact, I think the blues, Blue Point, Blue Hill, Blue Hill, I think also it's, I think, and they might call it the hill and there's like, there's no hill there. And people are like, I, I don't know why, I don't, I don't, don't expect, don't expect people in the world to know this stuff, because they don't. They'll be like, uh, the hill or the hills. 
you know, I've got to go, I've got to go down to the hills to pick up, you know, to get this thing signed. Or, you know, my kid's graduating from the university. I go to the hill, like, why is it called hills? Well, Blue Hill, Blue Point, but there's no hill there. Um, it just, people get tired. People are like, you know, I love the books. Let's keep the lights on for an investor. Literally investing. Thank you very much. Two subs, two months in a row. Be timeless. Thank you for the sub. Um, I don't know what just happened, but Scurvy Ninja just seemed, just said, I see your point. I probably jumped the gun. Thank you for explaining. <laughs> People are cool. We can't. One of the things you learn in community moderation is that when someone's being a wang, a wanger, like 90% of the time, if you just say, if you just say, uh, hey, I think you're having a bad day, man. <laughs> If you give them, if you give somebody an opportunity to stand down, they will probably stand down. If you force them to double down, they will probably double down. So giving people the opportunity to stand down. That's something um, I, uh, I was uh, really, really, really good friends with a, 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 a woman who worked for the Orange County Sheriff's deputy. Uh, she, was, she was a deputy. Uh, and we would, anytime there was like, you know, police violence, which is, you know, there's quite a lot of here in America... Uh, she was just always baffled. She's like, she's like, we, we, so much of our training is like, when you show up, when you show up, the first thing you're supposed to do is de-escalate. That's your job. <laughs> that you get so much training to just de-escalate the situation. You're the one with all the authority. You're the one in the uniform, and you've got a gun. When that person says, hey, folks, what's going on? <laughs> People are like, oh, shit, right? When that person pulls a gun, it's a very different tenor. That conversation's now going to go down a different trouser of time. And so it's all about, you know, anyway, I learned quite a lot from her in her life. Um, pardon me, unfortunately. I have to. Uh, Pacific Squall, I somehow suspect that that, 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 uh, that statistic is not going to be a fertile area for exploration in this chat. Uh, Adric, we miss you. Well, we're gonna miss you, Adric. As your, as your, as your, maybe if you had named your handle, Adric, we're not gonna miss you because you're gonna stick around. You wouldn't have to go. So, um, I don't know who HBOM is, but thank you for, uh, hopefully their stream you was is long enough you'll be able to go back to it. So, now we know a little bit about this. It's called the Blues, Blue Hill, um, depending, I think these different things, different classes or different subcultures call it different stuff. But everybody always knows what they mean. Um, so what is a college, what is an example, what is an example of a college at Oxford? Like, what are they called? Because I think I know what they're, I think they're called like King's College and stuff like that. Theater, the University Church of St. Mary the Virgin, organization, departments. Hey, it's a trap. It's a trap. I think likes the Tarna email. We will almost certainly, we will almost certainly be streaming NetHack tonight. We're going to stream for, I don't know, maybe another hour, an hour and a half. We'll see. Colleges. Here we go. Wow. Look at that. My nose itches. The older you get, the more hairs grow in weird places, and all of a sudden you start itching somewhere. You're like, what's going on? Oh, because there's hair growing there, and it's tickling my nose. Um, I'm going to need to get... So here's a... This is really interesting. So here's a list. Actually, there's a whole page. Colleges of the university. We don't need to know all of them. We only need to know a couple. Well, okay. Why? We're dungeon masters. Don't, don't make the mistake... Don't make the mistake of thinking that you need to know everything. If you know there are 26 colleges, right? If you know there are 26 colleges and you know what three of them are, three to me is kind of the magic number. Um, if, and you know what three of them are, then you've, you know everything you need to know to convince your players that there are 26, right? I think when we're starting off, we think, oh, I got to know all this stuff. I know this whole list. But lists aren't useful. Just like percentages, remember, percentages aren't useful. 
uh, they're not human parsable. So we don't need to know all the different colleges. We just need to know that there are 26 and we need to know what a handful of them are called. And that allows us, again, that allows us to improvise. That allows us to make stuff up, right? Uh, the rule of three will get us a long way. I've never played Secret Hitler. I feel, although I met the dude uh, who designed it and his significant other, she was our host at a thing at Gen Con that was super fucking cool, and she was awesome. Him, I didn't get to talk to that much. I assume that he is awesome because she's awesome. So, uh, Chronosareth, I think all, I think many, I don't know, I could be wrong, many of the colleges are also wizard colleges. It's not all, it's like the College of Statescraft and Diplomacy is also a, as a wizard college. It's both. Like, these guys don't make a distinction between arcanism and knowledge. They go together. They go together. So it's almost like if you were going to Oxford in the 15th century, or 16th or 17th, probably, or 18th, or maybe even 19th, you would also, not only would you have to learn all this stuff, you'd have to learn Latin and Greek, right? You'd have to learn all these subjects, including whatever you're majoring in, and you were expected to know Latin and Greek. Well, for the, all of these colleges, Latin and Greek is magic. You're expected to know magic. Right? You might come out of this as an, you might graduate as like an eldritch knight or like a warlock or like a wizard, right? You, depending on where you're going to go. But, pardon me. Uh, no, Omniscient Ginger, they're not going to be named stuff like that. They're going to be named stuff like, um, so here's, actually, let me, well, we can just bring it down here, nur, 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 and you guys should be able to see it. Nur, 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 nur. Whoa! Where'd you go? Come back here. So this is a list of the colleges, right? And their permanent private halls. Nur, nur, nur. <coughs> All right, so look, we have St. Peter's, we have St. John's, we have St. So we have a whole bunch of them named after saints. Yeah, so that seems like a, a good place to start. Um, saying I don't know what, but let's not go overboard on the saint thing. Um, Lincoln, Brace Nose, never heard of this. Officially, the King's Hall and College of Brace Nose. That's, that sounds good, right? I like that. Christ Church, Corpus Christi, the Body of Christ, Exeter one of the constituent colleges of the University of Oxford. So, um, yeah, that's a good idea, Ant underscore R, but uh, is religion or magic more important? You know, there's a great book. I, I it, it was tough to get started in, but then I ground through it. Have I finished it? I don't know. I may have gotten to the end. I'm not sure. Called The Time Traveler's Guide to Medieval England. And the conceit of you as a time traveler, unfortunately, I don't believe was well deployed. It would only, we would only dip into the idea that, that it's a guidebook for you, the modern person in medieval, um, the medieval era, rarely. But I really like that conceit, and I wish it had been deployed more. But the dude made a really, I thought, really important point, a really good point. And he's talking about the Crusades, right? And he's talking about people in, in uh, the 12th century going off on these crusades, right? These are, uh, <coughs> these are nobles who would raise money and take, uh, take some kind of, take their knights and any of those who wanted to go off on an adventure, peasants who would, you know, talking, sort of talking about how much of the world, this, this myth, it's a statistic and it might be an accurate statistic, but it's misleading that the average medieval peasant never went 30 miles beyond their home. And he's like, yeah, there were a lot of people who never went 10 miles beyond their home, but Everyone in this era would have known someone who had been to France or even all the way to the Holy Land, even all the way to Jerusalem, right, on these crusades. We may have to turn this up a little bit. You can't, you can't stay still while So Electric's playing. So, um, and he makes this point, which I thought was super important, but we don't want the music to. He makes this point, which I thought was super important. He's like, we in the modern era, 
look at these nobles who went on this crusade as opportunistic adventurers seeking plunder. That they thought they were going to go to the to the Holy Land. They were going to go to Jerusalem. And they were going to plunder these rich Muslim cities and come back with sacks of gold. Right? And that their... Um, the, the, the propaganda that this was to you know, make Jerusalem Christian again was just an excuse and that they didn't really care about that and they didn't really believe that. And it was all about cash, right? And uh, he's like, that's, that's wrong. That's wrong. They did not have our prejudices. They did not have our worldview. It was 100% adventurism. Let's go get some gold. Let's go get rich. Um, it was also at the same time 100% a theological mission. They believed, they 100% they believed in what they were doing and what they were doing was ordained by God and that they were going to make a difference. And those two ideas did not conflict. They existed simultaneously one on top of the other. And that is an important part of understanding the way human beings think, right? And the way they're able to blend these ideas together. And that we, so when you ask about magic and religion or you ask about magic and knowledge for people in Rioja magic and knowledge are these are not two different things these are the same thing they are perfectly capable they would not they would not consider the understanding of how to build an aqueduct as being meaningfully different than the understanding of how to cast fireball right and going to school somebody who goes to school goes to school to get power knowledge and that power could be art literally arcane power or it could be so uh, yeah, I think Dragor is correct. Yes. So there's a lot of people asking me questions in chat. Is it this or is it this? Is it one of these or one of these? And every time I see that question, I get skeptical. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. I'm always like, it's probably some blend of the two. We, especially nerds, of whom I am one, especially I would when we're teenagers, we want everything to be black and white. And we want answers. We want yes and no. You're either this or you're this. If you have this, then you are that and that there's no ambiguity. We hate ambiguity. That's the reason we like role-playing games. By the way, we hate ambiguity. That's the reason we fall in love with a game like D&D. Because when you start reading the Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide, there is an illusion and a promise that there's an answer in here somewhere. That whatever question you might have, there's an answer. And kids love that feeling. Uh, but as adults, it's up to us to be able to hold contradictory ideas in our head at the same time. Uh, so what, so they, so what is, what goes on, Kellogg? That's probably a person's name. That's probably a proper name. 1990. Wow, it's the 36th college, which means, yeah, founded in 1990, and the largest by number of students. Holy crap. <laughs> you know, I think Der Viking Tron, yeah, I think, um, there are probably a lot of people, and we'll get to this. One of the things I want to talk about are the laws, what's legal to do. Um, so I think somebody said something about a um, college named after. I would say. House Alvaro. It's probably Alvaro is how they pronounce it, but I'm probably going to be pronouncing it Alvaro quite a lot. Like, would you name one after Tensor? I would not. I do not own Tensor. There's a lot of advice I give to people that I do not follow because I am in a position to monetize my hobby, and so I got to be careful. That make sense? I'm sorry. I gotta go spray my hair because it, what happens when it gets this long is it starts to kind of get in my eyes and it annoys me. See, I knew that. I, I, the, the fact that I, yeah. Well, that's probably going to be, you know, one of the. Um, Hockey for Life. So, you know, it's funny, Band Brett, thank you for the sub, Hockey for Life. When it comes to making magic commonplace or common knowledge, I worry about situations where my players will go, well, why aren't they using magic? That's a good question. And um, it may be that magic isn't that common. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out together. But it may, I, but the capital is a high magic city, right? When you look up, I think this is an important, an important thing in 
Like when you look around, when you look up, you see flying carpets zipping around the way we see Ubers, right? So that tells you something about this city. Um, but I think there can be cultural restrictions. Like, you know, somebody from New York is baffled by why, I don't understand why you care so much about the price of gas. Why don't you, you, you take the subway everywhere? Like, motherfucker, we don't have subways. What are you talking about? And if you did take the subway, guess what? The nearest subway stop is literally eight miles from the place I'm trying to get to. Now what? So I'm just gonna drive. You're gonna drive? I don't even own a car. I don't even have a driver's license. We're in the same country. We're in the same country, we use the same currency. We use the same currency, we use the same language, more or less. But people from New York are often have to have explained to them why the super obvious thing to them, everybody just doesn't do. And that happens in the real world. So the question is, KOH513, thank you very much for the sub. Slippy, Slippy Squid is the gift, thank you. It doesn't tell me when people gift subs here. We need to fix that, Jerry. Jerry, I know you're watching this in the future. I know you watch my live streams back later on. I know you can hear my thoughts, boy. Meow, 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 meow. So we're going to have the College of Saint something, and we're going to have a college named after the founder of House Alvaro. And let's come up with one more. Trinity College, I'm pretty sure I know what that is, founded by Thomas Pope. Wolfson Constituent College, located in North Oxford, along the River Cherwell. I'm pretty sure I've just mispronounced that. Wolfson is an all-graduate college. Um, so I think the question is, why, do, why don't people use magic more often? First of all, you have to be a graduate of the university, right? Which, I don't know, maybe 12% of the population have graduated from the university. So use, and that kind of marks you as a knob, as a blue blood, right? Um, Santream, thank you for the sub, two months in a row. Yeah, we have fraternities, student gangs. That's a good question, Sippy Sippy Squid. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, this is just going to turn into a mess for a while. But uh, actually, it's going to be a fraternity. Yeah, it's probably going to be a fraternity. Um, because Rioja, classically, unlike much of the rest of my setting, is a patriarchal society. Um, that's relatively unusual in my setting. UKHC, thank you for the sub. Subs help keep the doors open, the lights on, and allow us to do things like try to, uh, try to... Actually, that's a good question, Zoscale 10. Zoscale 10 asked a question that I have no idea what he meant, or what they meant. But, um, it makes me, it makes me God, that is such an inspiring question. Um, so this is this is um, uh, Moltar from Moltar from Space Ghost. Thank you for the sub. K sixteen FAX. Thank you for the sub. What do you think about adventurers guilds? Do they exist? Guilds? I don't know. So, see, Cheshire Mad, this is straight up, this is straight up from that person's question. Um, is that, uh, well, Z so Zoscale was just following along, I think, from what I said. What I said was, if you see somebody in the, in, in the city using magic, that's almost certainly a result of them being a graduate of the university. And I love that notion that now we're taking magic and knowledge University, university education, and the ability to go to the university, the wealth, the wealth necessary, and we're conflating them. So that people in the city for generations have just made this association that somebody who can cast a spell, you know. But then, the, what follows from that? What follows from that? Zoskel or exoskel, exo, exoskeleton, exoskeleton! <laughs> ah, I got there, I'm not dumb, not like people say, I'm smart, and I want respect. Um, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta put that in the machine, don't I? I? Gotta make a note of that. Put that in the machine. Um, said, well, you said they had to be a graduate to use magic. So does it not follow that House Alvaro, huge political power in the city for generations, generational power, got literal like legislative power, part of the Prince's Privy Council, 
controls the university. Wouldn't it follow that they would use that power to say, hey, not only are we the owners and sponsors of the college that teaches people magic, or building onto this logical statement, we're gonna, we're gonna forbid people from using magic unless they've been to the college. Because they have that power, and this has probably been true now for quite a long time. Didn't we just learn something interesting? Didn't we just learn something super interesting about the city? I feel like we did. Well, Gloria Segfault, I think that, I think I'll actually, um, that's going to be something where, oh, you can see my notes, yeah. Um, I actually don't know what that means. Oh, it's a scroll of earth. It's a scroll of earth. That's what that means. I think that, you know, sorcerers are natural talents. And so that's probably going to be being a sorcerer in the city, right? Is it, is it illegal? Bonded? Maybe. Maybe. Cinema broke. So remember at the, remember early on in this stream when we all thought there was not going to be anything useful or fun that was going to happen? I feel like we've learned a lot already. Which means there has to be some sort of organization Right? So imagine a sorcerer uses, imagine for instance, the staff sorcerer of the chain uses a spell in, in, in a tavern because people are trying to make, people are trying to, you know, crack wise. And the, source, the staff sorcerer uses a spell. People in that tavern are gonna go, I guarantee you that guy didn't go to the fucking university. There has to be somebody they can go tell. I don't know who it is, we're not gonna figure it out right now. They have to go tell. And that person's gonna show up and say, where's your, where's your bond? And the staff sorcerer is going to be like, what are you talking about? He's like, sorcerers in the city have to be bonded, bro. I'm like, what does that even mean? He's like, well, I'm going to show you. And there's like a medallion or something, right, that shows, hey, that. So. Templar, arbiter, these are two loaded, these are loaded terms. That's a good question, Macabre Witch. Macabre, macabre, which cinema broke. Thank you for the sub. Chris Picaro, Chris Picaro, 18. Thank you for the sub. Um, I feel like the enforcers should be psionic. That would be cool. An order, an order of dragonborn, a dragonborn gemstone, dragonborn knights that show up and are like, bro, your magic doesn't work on me, bro. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's, it's, it's a mistake to imagine, it's a mistake that, it's a mistake to imagine that just because we, we had an idea that we then have to follow it through and drill down on it. I'm perfectly happy just leaving this here. Um, I'm perfectly happy just leaving this here and coming back to it. But it's a super cool idea. It's a super cool idea, right? We're learning a lot about the city already and the behavior of people in the city. I think I just spelled practice using the... I, some, there was a formative period in my life where I was working on a Lord of the Rings role-playing game and I had to change my dictionary, my word dictionary to uh, uh, British English. And there's literally still some words that I spell with British English as a result. Um, what about foreign students who studied elsewhere? The, the city doesn't care about them. They're gonna have to go through, the, they're gonna have to jump through the same hoops. Like, they try to, if, they, if, they're, if they try to cast spells in the city, they're gonna get in trouble. Um, so we're still not done with the, we know what this area is called. It's called Blues, um, or Blue Hill, or the Hills. I think Blue Point became Blue Hill because people didn't know what Blue Point meant, and strangers in the city thought. Um, is that only arcane magic? I think so, yeah. Could a sorcerer just buy or steal a holy symbol? Are you asking, are you, a Scurvy Ninja, are you asking if people in capital break the law? I don't, 
think so. I don't think that ever happens. Um, so we definitely want some fraternities. I think I know what one of them is already. Because that was a fraternity in this, the last time we played here, that was a fraternity one of my players joined. Uh, Well, Fishbot217, I don't think it has to be. I think there's like, you know, uh, the equivalent of a license. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't look like a, a, a driver's license. It would be like a, a SEAL or, you know, something like that. Um, so what, so there's 26 colleges, Imperial University, 26 colleges, College of Saint something. Let's figure that out. Let's figure that out right now. Um, Violence, bravery, art, I like that. Cowardice, love, romance, passion, fate, and fortune, nobility. Um, inbred, hey, 50 bits, thank you for the bits. I think you're already a, a subscriber, Inbred, cheese me. Yep, I knew that. I'll have to get some more liquid in a minute. Signet ring, a signet ring's not a bad idea, actually. I like that, because I, I don't want everything to be seals. Um, And I bet there are different rings. And I bet there's probably, I bet, I bet there's probably a uh, St. Issa. Which one is that? Oh, magic, lore, knowledge. Yeah, that makes sense. I think actually, isn't there a diacritical in there? There is. Did I miss everything for the third time? You missed some dope shit, Frosty Schnibble. I'm not gonna lie to you. Maybe. So I definitely think a college ring, right? I definitely think a college ring. And probably it's one of those things where, you know, like, somebody casts a spell and uh, the cops show up. And it might be days later, right? And they're like, what were you doing, man? And they go like, my cop's like, oh, okay, yeah, you're fine. But depending on the scenario, like, did you murder somebody, right? Depending on the scenario, the cop might be, let me see that. Because these can be forged, right? But in general, you know, when you hear, when you hear hooves, think horses, not zebras. So it's, it's very easy for some, the, 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 there's the law, remember my first concert, there's the law, I told you guys that story, right? There's the law, and then there's the implementation of the law, which also often only has a very vague relationship to the actual law, right? So just, just if, if it's like, I, I am coming, I, the only reason I'm even here is just to make sure that, that what happened wasn't illegal. And you show off your ring, and the cop's like, okay, I was sort of expecting, you look like a, you look like a blue blood. You look like a blue blood, you've got the ring. As far as I'm concerned, that's, I'm, I'm not going to pursue it any farther. Because 99% of the time, it's, but if I, but I'm also a human being, and I'm, I'm a trained professional, and if I get a sense from you, this is a deception check, right? If I get, did I tell you what happened in D&D &D on Wednesday night? Oh my god, it was a lot of fun. Um, if I get a sense from you that not everything's kosher, I'm going to say, let me see that ring. Right? Uh, and there are probably nobles who would be like, you asked to see my ring, sir? Do I ask to see your badge? Do I ask about your mother and your father? Do I ask about your grandparents? Why do you not go about your business and leave me to mine? And a lot of cops would be like, yeah, all right. Because they know what it's like. They know what it's like to deal with actual nobility, right? Uh, they know what it's like, and they're like, fine. If the person acts like, so that's, you, you, made, you rolled a good, yeah, that, you're, you're a complete fraud, but you made a good deception check, and you said the right things. And so the cop might leave you alone. But if the scenario that brought me here was bad enough, if you did something crazy enough, Nightly Elf, two bits, thank you for the bits, every bit helps, then I might drill down. I might risk my career. Maybe you are actually one of those people that can ruin my career if I pursue this. That's how things work, right? So, but I do like that. So we, um, we were playing Dungeons and Dragons on Wednesday night. This is Matt O'Driscoll, my friend Jason, my friend Wes, and, and Anna. 
and they were trying to rescue this druid NPC that had been helping them out in the forest from this cave, and these gnolls, these three gnolls that were that appeared to be about to sacrifice them, to sacrifice this druid, uh, and I had made a mistake. I told the, I, I, had, I in trying to convey to the players how tough this owlbear was they were going, they had fought earlier, I said, this owlbear is about as tough as like, as like three orcs, right? I, and I just off the cuff, you know, and they had fought some orcs earlier and they're like, how are we gonna like, two orcs almost killed us at first level. And so they chased off the owlbear. They didn't try to fight the owlbear, they chased off the owlbear. And so now I, now that I have this metric, right? I was like, the one knoll is like three orcs. And they were like, holy shit, we can't fight nine orcs. And I was like, well, you guys are gonna have to figure something out. And they're like, what the fuck? How are we gonna? Now it turns out I was wrong because I was remembering gnolls from an earlier edition of the game, or maybe two different earlier editions of the game. A gnoll is about the same as an orc, as it turns out. Good morning, Diadems, 1970. 1970 was a very good year. For one thing, the crop of Matt Colville's was 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 good. The harvest was excellent. And uh He is an awesome player, Axon Hill. That was a huge that was a huge crapshoot, but he's an amazing player. He's a lot of fun to play with. But you got to meet him halfway. An enthusiastic player who has very silly ideas. You got to take it seriously and try to convert those silly ideas into, into good ideas. Uh, and he had some silly ideas, but we did a good job. He met me halfway too. So they were more afraid of these gnolls than they needed to be. And the Matt O'Driscoll's player is a dragonborn bard. And spontaneously over the first session, he and the warlock with the charlatan background decided that they knew each other. And they had been running a scam in the city. And the scam was he would, this dragonborn bard would cast the sky self and make himself appear like a, oh no, he would be his dragon, like this warlock would arrest this dragonborn bard and try to get the bounty. And then once they had collected the bounty, the dragonborn bard would cast the sky self and now there'd be a drunk human in jail and where'd the dragonborn go? And they would really, and they just made that up. And I was like, that was, I gave him inspiration for that because it was brilliant. It was brilliant, the idea that they had the scam. And so they're like, well, let's run the scam on these guys. And my friend Jason said, let's do get help. <laughs> and I don't think O'Driscoll knew what that meant. He's like, let's do get help. And O'Driscoll goes, yeah, yeah, we'll do the Star Wars thing where you're, you're, you're Chewbacca and I'm the Stormtrooper. And so O'Driscoll casts his guy's self and we read the rules and yeah, you could make yourself look like a knoll, but he doesn't speak knollish. And so he does a performance check or a deception check, I don't remember which, and he got a 20. He got a 20 and he acted out what he was going to do. And so it worked. They didn't think, they didn't, they, they thought he was a knoll, but he didn't, it didn't occur to Matt that there might be more to it than thinking he's a knoll. They didn't think he was one of their knolls. And so that's the law of unintended consequences. That's dungeon mastering, 101, improving. You got what you wanted, yes, but it didn't go exactly the way you expected it to go. They think you're a knoll, that's what you wanted, but they know they're, you're not one of their knolls. They know you're not part of their tribe. Right? Uh, so, yeah, I forgot why I brought that up. It was important and it sounded good. And I was able to keep the flow going until Sierra rocks. Thank you for the bits. That's a lot of bits. Still blown away by, by William Allen 73 giving us, I think that's a hundred bucks. Although somebody pointed out if, that, if his name might not be William Allen, it might be him saying, Will, Will, I am Allen. Uh, that was the story about Wednesday's game. So that has something to do with this. We have the College, the college of uh, Issa, a uh, college named after the founder of House Alvaro, which I'll figure it out. If you hear hooves, yeah, I don't remember what that was. It's not important, it was a good story, regardless of what, and, and if it was important, we'll get back to it. Uh, oh, speak noblish, yeah, exoskeleton. The idea of, the idea of being able, you can you can bluff your way through a lot of stuff, and people are only going to investigate. Especially like you know, if if you look and seem like the thing the cops are used to dealing with, the cops are going to treat you like the thing they're used to dealing with. That's eighty percent of it, right? Um, and the cops probably know that there are people who are not members of the university who cast spells, but they probably apply this law. This is the story of my first concert. They probably apply this law unfairly and unjudiciously. So there are people who get away with 
you being able to use sorcery or spells in the city, and they don't get punished for it because it, it might be that they're like it, they might, because there's prejudice and there's uh, you know the, the the law isn't fair. The law is an ass. Anyway, I have to get something to drink. Sorry. I feel like this is a dope ass stream. I feel like we learned some really cool fucking shit about magic in the city, um, about the name of this district. Uh, let's figure out. I'd like to know what the let's let's go back to um, the Wesieth. Thank you for the sub, Mr. Jack Legend. Thank you for the sub. One Kimmy. Thank you for the somebody crimpty 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 crim. Uh, uh, what's the uh. Bouncy, bouncy, ooh, such a good time. Bouncy, bouncy, shoes all in a line. Bouncy, bouncy, stiletto is a no-no. Sorry, I just wanted to throw out a crimp there. Don't try to distract me with a crimp. Um, can, can Calculated Will get a sub? Hang on a minute. There's 1,100 viewers here. That's pretty cool. Hey, 1,100 viewers. I was going to do it myself, Anonymous Gifter, but I couldn't figure out how to get there quick enough. Um, sorry. Hello. Hi. Hey, everybody. Nearly 1,200. It's not bad. I'm super curious to see how many people... I hope t those 1,200 watching... I realize most of you who are watching are listening and not sitting at your computer, probably doing something else while you're listening to Matt Colville blather on. Um, but hello, it is me, viewer, Crew17. It's neat seeing names. I like it whenever we call out people who are lurking and see a whole bunch of names that I haven't seen before. Um, so Fusion, Fuse, Fu, hang on a minute. Fusion Atsuna says, Ryoans will often duel at the drop of a hat. Drop of hat's not fast enough. Um, there is some level of honor not to use magic. That's a good question. Um, yeah, probably. That's probably true. They probably wouldn't use magic, even if it were, even if it were among, or maybe if it were among two members of the college, two graduates. Um, cheers from Poland, awesome. Um, I'm super curious to, to guess how many people are going to be <laughs> lurker forever. Is the kobold way? How many, how many people are? Well, quick recap. I think I don't know how to. I don't know how to recap quickly. I, um, working while building trolls? Mr. Perma, thank you for the sub. Thunder Chicken, welcome aboard. I did, GG Sigma. I thought that was pretty remarkable. Um, could you tap the volume? Don't you have your own volume control? Um, what the hell was I about to... Uh, what the hell was I about to say? It was something important too. Jeff, okay. Well, I was super curious to see. I'm curious to see what you folks think. Like, how many people are going to watch our first D and D stream, which is going to be toward the end of the month? Um, because we're, I, I will be surprised if it's more than about um, three thousand people. Um, because considering we normally get about twelve hundred, a really successful live stream is about twelve hundred people. 2,500, that seems like it might be reasonable. People are saying things like 10,000. I don't imagine that's true. Um, I don't, because we never get, you know, obviously, well, we'll see. I'm probably gonna have to do a, a Kickstarter update, actually, considering, I, I gotta remember that. Hang on a minute, let me put that on my list of shit I have to do. Um, I gotta put a Kickstarter update, because people back the Kickstarter because they wanna see launching the stream. That list of ta uh, tasks for Matt to do. Um, write a Kickstarter update. Make a note. Probably the same day of the video. Because there's 30,000 people to back the Kickstarter, some of whom want the reason they did it. Snow Sif, I appreciate that. You being here is an inspiration to me. Keeps, it helps motivate me and keep me going. Prostaboots! 
Thank you for the bits of pasta books. Um, exoskeleton, that seems uh, optimistic, but we'll see. Is there a date for the first session? Yes, we just haven't announced it yet. Um, Uh, I, the, the number of people that watch the first stream isn't really significant. A hundred thousand people could watch. They won't. Don't get me wrong. But that it does, the, the, what is important is who tunes into the second stream. That's our first data point. The first data point doesn't really matter. Who tunes into the second stream and then who tunes into the third stream? Because if that number doesn't grow, then that's going to be depressing. I do. I have just haven't announced it. I, I, is there a date for the announcement next week? Thank you for the bits, Blaine B. I've turned off, where'd my uh, thing go? Steve Voss, thank you for the bits. That's quite a lot of bits. Blaine B and Prostaboots, thank you for the bits. Jeff a Cake, thank you for the sub. It might not, Rowena Black. I mean, you say that, um, it, it, it might not. It might shrink. It might go, people might go, eh, this isn't, this isn't, you know, this is what I'm down for. We streamed, uh, we've streamed three times. We streamed once for a couple of weeks. Stopped. We streamed again for a couple of weeks. Stopped. And this is going to be the third time. And each time our production got better. But the first first stream, first stream, it got, we, the audience shrank every week. We had fewer people watching every week. Yes, definitely Adam Gardens did hack tonight. And then um, the second stream, I don't know if it grew or not. But the production value was a lot better on it. So if the, if the stream does not grow, if the audience doesn't grow, then that challenges our business model. And, and our, all of our assumptions. So that's going to be the trick: is seeing if we, if if people want to, if more people want to watch every week. Um, and actually, you know, Jack's R twenty. You don't have to watch live. It, it, the it, audience includes people watching live and video on demand and stuff like that. What is the proposed length of the game stream? Um, it's probably going to be ninety minutes. Take a break, ninety minutes. I'm guessing. Um, we'll see. Would you continue doing the stream if the numbers aren't what you want? No, probably not. Actually. If the, then we could definitely have bad enough numbers that I'm like, this isn't worth it. You know, like, we're probably not going to be playing last game wins anymore. We might do one or two more. We might do letters from Whitehall. And we might do it on rare occasions and do last game wins and play something. But um, the reality is that it's not a good use of our time. If I stream NetHack, we get a lot, like, and, and of course, if I stream NetHack, we get a lot more viewers. We get a lot more engagement, right? Because that's me sitting here talking to folks and hanging out and doing cool stuff. And code names and last game wins is not what people want. I think for some people it's engaging and entertaining, but the audience for it doesn't really grow. It's um, it's it's self evidently not what people. I don't have a target. Morgan DK, I don't have a target viewer number. I honestly don't. This isn't me being coy. This is me giving you the straight dope. And I don't even have a growth number. I just want to see the the I, the way I deem success is is it growing? That's all. Are more people watching? Are more people listening? That's all. Um, well, you paid for the, yeah, no, you paid for the stream and we're going to stream it. You're going to get that. But the, the, the Kickstarter was not, was not, I am going to stream D and D for X number of sessions. How could it be? Think about it, right? It's not a, it's not, a, you can't guarantee that a TV show is going to last for an infinite number of seasons. So there is definitely a point where if there's like only 30 people watching, we're going to stop. We won't stop. We'll try something else is what we'll try. I have, I have no idea, Crimdy. I have no idea. But we're definitely going to, um, we're, it, there's definitely a point at which it could be, it could be so few people are watching this, that, that we feel like, well, we have all this gear and we have, and we, and we, we have the ability to do lots of different things. Let's do something that people want to watch. If we, that's the goal. If we can't do something people want to watch. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, manage, hard, manage hard in the paint. There are a lot of Twitch streamers that would be delighted to have even our numbers right now, 1,200 people watching. Um, so, but I, I think that's, um, it's very, un, very unlikely that we would have so few viewers Keep in mind that even, even if we had very few viewers, as long as there was more over time. But if it's shrinking, if the number of people are shrinking, then of course we're going to start thinking, what's going on? How do we fix this? Right? It will be streamed on this channel. I played Dark Souls once. 
That's right, I gotta get some water. Let's make a little bit more progress, considering we just had a whole big tangent that didn't have anything to do with Alvaro. Um, are you going to avoid Thursday night to avoid losing people to Critical Role? Yes. Well, that's not really why. Um, it's a mistake to imagine that the reason we're not streaming on Thursday nights is, is because that's when Critical Role is. Although that's part of it, I don't, but it's also, it's also there, there are two main reasons. One, uh, some of my players watch Critical Role. <laughs> and they are like, I'm busy Thursday nights, bro. When I said, what, what nights do you guys want to stream? They're like, I don't, I'm, but that being said, now that some of them work here, I think they're a little bit too busy for that. We'll see. But also because they're my friends. I don't want to, I don't want to, what the hell? I don't want to put, I, 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 that would be, that would be a very strange thing to do would be to try to put my stream on the same night as their stream. Um, so let's see, where were we? They want three colleges, the College of St. Isa. Um, and what is that? That doesn't tell us anything though. Um, so what do the different colleges, this is important. What do the different colleges in What do they do? What is the difference between one college and another? Matt does not really know. So, let's see. What's the di let's let's look at um, let's just look at two different colleges. Let's look at Exeter College and Jesus College. It's a constituent college. I don't know what that means. I don't really care. I could look it up. A school to educate clergymen. Okay, that seems reasonable. It's a, uh, a, that was originally founded as a school to educate clergymen. Although now it had, wow, Tolkien went there. I didn't know that, that's cool. William Morris, Richard Burton. Which Richard Burton? Oh. Still situated in its original location in Turrell Street, Exeter College was founded in 1314. Uh, school to educate the clergy. During its first century, it was known as Stapleton Hall. That's good to know, see? Um, that's why. It's good to know. Uh, significantly smaller, 12 to 14 students. The college grew significantly. Its motto is Floriat, Floriat Exxon, meaning let Exeter flourish. It doesn't really tell me, like, so do different colleges not have different, like, I guess maybe not. I always sort of assumed that different colleges had different specializations, but I could be completely wrong. Um, Sir Chamomile, yeah, this tells you what I know. The colleges aren't topically segmented. I guess like, what, what, what is it that gives one college, uh, yeah, no, that, that I can tell, John, because it says it was originally a, uh, we, we uh, well, here, I don't, if it turns out, um, if it turns out, like Mkavian says, that the different colleges don't really have different specializations, because that's not how modern colleges work. Um, that's not useful to me as a dungeon master. I want them to be different. So I may, I may, and so since it's College of St. Isa, something hall, it's, um, its specialty is, it, it educates the clergy. Uh, specifically nobles. So let's find out what the name of this hall is. Let's go back to our old standby, Caravaggio. There are a million different... There are a million different ways to get to this destination. Um, But when I need authentic um, Renaissance sounding stuff, I go to the Wikipedia entry for Caravaggio, who's one of my favorite artists, because it's just chock full of great names. And they're all super authentic.
uh, Presidio Hall, which is like Presidio. It was originally a garrison. It was originally a garrison. It was donated. It was donated to the church. So the first, the first building in this college was Presidio Hall. It was originally a garrison, Presidio. Presidio and uh, there was some power shift or somebody got broke or something and it was donated to the church and the church used it to start a school. The Uninvisible Man. Wouldn't that just be the Visible Man? Sorry. So now we know a little bit about one of the colleges. The college, it educates the clergy, mostly specifically the nobles. There's a college named after the founder of House Alvaro. Who is that? I don't know. How about... This guy is famous. So yeah, let's lose it. Um, so this is... Cosimo, Cosimo Alvaro. It might even be, just change it a little bit, Cosimi, Cosimi College. That's, this is in their language, not ours, not any real language. It's gone from being sort of like a noun to like an adjective. Um, yeah, that's, that's who I stole it from, but. Uh, let's see, we have the Imperial University. There are tons of colleges. Uh, and what, what do they study at Cosimi College? I so we know that one of the we know the College of Statescraft and Diplomacy. Because my friend uh, Aaron, the Duke who plays his the his PC is Kenway of Dalrath, the Lord of Dalrath, studied there. Um, so we know that one of these places educates the clergy. Um, we know that Cosimi College. We know what it's named after. We don't know what they study there or what their specialization is. Architecture? I actually like that, John of Phoenix. Um, it's a broad, it's a broad curriculum, but that's perfectly reasonable. See, yeah, a whole bunch of people want to see the different colleges correspond to the schools of magic, but that I don't that doesn't that doesn't appeal to me even a little bit. Um, that's not how colleges in real hall work. A law school, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, maybe that's a fourth college. So I want um, let's see, colleges of the university named after some of these are named after places. Um, so, I'm looking up where what the word Milan comes from. So I want a place name. So let's go to Milan, which is the um, huge city in northern Italy, and see if I could figure out some Mediolanum. I have to get something to drink. Um, I definitely think law, I also think like math, like Sierra rocks. Sierra does rock. Thank you for the subs. Ten gifted subs. That's quite a lot. Harlequin Red Sky's right. I gotta get a drink. Uh, I'm gonna go get some uh, juice, and we'll be right back. Let's make sure that folks can have something interesting to watch while they're. Where is my? We can turn up the volume a little bit. So you guys, this is only gonna take like a minute.
should have an idea for a patch, not entirely unlike this. That would be sort of kind of, actually, hang on. Kind of Brian Eno based. <clears throat> I think I know how to do something like this. So, something else I think we know about the city, welcome back folks. Something else I think we know about the city is that if, as I think we decided, that um, use of magic is prohibited unless you're a graduate of university, some organizations, some law, knights, if you can work this through, they must be um, uh, so Duke Prospero he's the number one guy in terms of like do not like do not like all these non-Riohans especially non-Riohan women having power in the city hate it hate it He's number one in, with that guy. Invisible Man, thank you for the sub. Um, but, and so a lot of people, is, Pros, is Prospero an 18th level caster? Might be. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, I think a number would be a distraction. Um, so it's easy to imagine the nobility as opposed to the guilds. The guilds are all democratic. and Well, they're not democratic, but they're very egalitarian. They're very multicultural, um, multi-ethnic. Um, they have, you know, they don't have any kind of... Um, they're not a patriarchy or a matriarchy. Um, so it's very easy to imagine, well, these are the good guys and the, the noble houses are the bad guys. But the noble houses are the ones banging the drum about Ajax and the fact that everyone in Orden knows that if the Pharaoh can't stop Ajax, and he's not going to be able to, if, if, if Pharaoh can't stop Ajax, probably nobody can. Although there's several other regions he has to conquer. And the last region is going to be Rioja and the last place is going to be Capital. And everyone sort of assumes that capital is going to be what stops Ajax from taking over. And it's the nobles, it's these kind of, you know, um, super conservative, super traditional nobles who are the ones trying to remind everyone that Ajax is coming. And the guilds were like, whatever with that, man. We don't care who's in charge. We'll make money either way. But it's also House Al so the House Alvaro are not the bad guys, although we do not agree with a lot of their policies and a lot of their attitudes. They're also the, they're, they're also the people in charge of, are we, it, it, can anyone stop this, this so-called saint? Well, they also are responsible for keep, stopping magic from taking over the city, right? Um, the, the, you know, this is uh, the, the prince. It's there because they have the right to, uh, they own the university, probably under a charter from the prince. Probably technically the prince owns the university, but it was granted to House Alvaro, you know, uh, 300 years ago. And part of that is, okay, you'll run, this is a huge power center of the city. You're going to be educating the nobles all over the world, but you're responsible for stopping magic from taking over. And so they go, okay, no problem. So their guys are... Uh, there, those, whatever that order of knights is, if they're even an order of knights, whatever those cops are, are considered by most of the people in the city the good guys. Right? How did the prince die? I have no idea. He was assassinated. So, you know, there was probably some kind of crisis, like prohibition. In America, there was probably some sort of crisis where the magic was fucking everywhere, and it was taking over, and and the city was grinding to a halt because all these people had access to to magic, and uh, it was the pr prince, a, a prince, not the one that died recently, a prince, granting House Alvaro right to run the university, and part of the deal was, Duke Leto, you can have Arrakis, but part of the deal is. Right, you have to solve this problem, and how? And the, the Duke at the time was like, "All right," and they have—it's a sacred charm. They have taken it very seriously ever since. So the people, even the people who prefer the guilds, this is where tension comes from, right? Even the people who prefer the egalitarian, multicultural, um, you know, gender-forward attitude of the guilds, 
still look at House Alvaro as kind of the good guys because they're the ones that make it I, so that I can do business without, you know, having to deal with sorcerers trying to exploit me. Ajax is from Phaedros. He's a Phaedron. So, we have, almost certainly have a law school. We have a school of mathematics, engineering, and weird magic. We're learning a lot about the Imperial University. We have the College of St. Issa, uh, also known as Presidi Hall. It educates the clergy, clergy mostly, specifically the nobles. So the, probably a lot of the higher-ranking members of the church that we're going to meet are graduates of this college, and that's cool. Yes, Phaedros is like, it's like Greece. There was a Rome, and it's collapsed. It was kind of in the same area. Um... Have you ever toyed with overhauling the magic system, or have you always thought it was fine as it is? Why do you put a little, uh, what's, what's that uh, emoji face there? What's that? Mm. What's the, uh, what's the mm for? Um, have I ever toyed with overhauling the magic system? Nope. I've been, always been perfectly happy with the magic system in d, &D. I, I, there are some things that, um, hello, Needless Mustard. Uh, by the way, I, I, once again, I would like to remind you, Dr. Mustard, that I disagree that there is such a thing as Needless Mustard. I'm starting to get hungry. It's almost one o'clock, so we've been streaming for a little while. We may stop. We, we probably won't go to two o'clock. Um, JC Fairley, you missed some dope shit. You're gonna have to watch the stream again. That might be worthy of uh, that clip. That clip where we figured out where the term blue blood comes from might be worth putting on YouTube. Um, I, I do disagree with things like the existence of sorcerers because when I, as a designer, when I look at sorcerers, I'm like, okay. You wanted people to be able to play D&D and be a magic user and not have to go through all the bookkeeping of being a wizard. <sighs> Whatever. But I sort of feel like, then what's the point? But that being said, I support sorcerers in my game. You know, people play sorcerers. Uh, I think sorcerers can be cool. But as a designer, I'm like, ugh. You know, either do it or don't do it. Don't do it and then say, also, if you don't like this. But that being said, I do a lot of that in Strongholds and Followers. I'm like, here's the system. If you don't like that, here's another one. And I think that's one of the reasons people, um, people, there are some, I think, super clear things in Strongholds and Followers that I regularly get questions on. And I'm like, it's, it's right here. It's right here in the book and it's bold. And people are like, oh. But I think one of the reasons that people get distracted is because not only the writing style, I don't think it's that big a problem. It's the fact that I say, here's how this works. Here, here, here's what we're trying to achieve. Here's how this works. Here's why I made that decision. And here's another choice if you don't like it that I've used. I've used this system too. That is the thing that I think makes it hard for people to find exactly what they need. So uh, kingdoms, organizations, and warfare, I think we're going to do a better job. Take it easy, R-Squeeze. Um, I think we're going to do a better job of making sure people... I'm not going to change the writing style because I think it was quite popular. But I definitely want to make it so that people can find the rule they're looking for easier. Um... So, yeah, say, Bunny, there's a great, the, the progenitor of all of this stuff is a guy named Zen Falks, who was the net rep for Legend of the Five Rings, and he coined the phrase, the rules are not trying to trick you. The number one question rules designers get, the number one question all game designers get when people start playing their game is, the rules say this. Do they mean this? And you're like, yes. It says I can only do this if I do this. Does that mean... Does that mean if I want to do this, I have to do that? Yes, <laughs> that is what it means. Um, but that's the nature of the beast. And I think Strongholds and Followers is better than most, better than some in that respect, but definitely my desire to show the thought process, the goal, the goal, the rule, the thought process, and some alternatives made it so people had a hard time finding stuff. So we can fix that in the next book. Um, I want to make sure that, stand by, that uh, Mr. Schmuck knows I'm here because he said he was going to come by. Uh, let me message him in a, via another message. It's weird that I don't have Tom's phone. Um, nert, 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 nert. Hey, I'm here, by the way, and will probably be here, lunch notwithstanding, until like 11 p.m. Net hack tonight, folks. Um, 
How late have I arrived? Thorn Gage, I don't know how much longer we're going to be doing this. I'd like to wrap this up. Um, I don't even know that I need to really finish the Imperial University College of Issa. The Cosimi College, named after the founder of House Alvaro, specializes in art, architecture, civic engineering, and magic. All of these schools also teach magic. The College of Statescraft and Diplomacy. Who is that named after? Uh, let's find out. It, oh, that was what I was looking at. I was looking at Milan, right? Milan is a city. Uh, and we can also imagine that these different, a lot of these different colored regions here, excuse me, a lot of these colored, what is weird magic? You know, I don't know, stuff that summons aliens and stuff like that. Um, warlock magic is probably what I would say weird magic is. Uh, Sierra Rocks, well, I'm glad you're at the Discord. The disc, we have an incredibly popular and successful Discord, largely self-regulated. Um, is there a college named after Kaylin Emperor? Bloodman 393? Yes! Uh, probably the law school. Hang on a minute. List of Roman emperors. Actually, fuck emperors. List of Roman senators. So. Ancient Roman senators. Stand by. What? Uh, senators of the Roman Empire. I don't want a famous one. I don't. I don't want a famous one. I just want an authentic one. This is something um, I, I, I. This is had always been my world building technique in D and D, but it was exposed professionally when I was at Pandemic Studios working on Mercenaries, and I needed to know where the Swedish hero uh, Matthias Nilsson was from, uh, and I was like, okay, where's this guy from? And I, well, he's from he's he's Swedish, so let's go to Sweden. What, where where can you be from in Sweden? And I literally just listed cities in Sweden by population, and I picked the first one I had never heard of. So that's the Matt Colville secret. You can you should have your own secrets, and you should have your own techniques that you should be developing yourself that makes your world yours and your process yours. But my process was, I'm, if I've heard of it, I'm going to throw it out. Because that's ridiculous, right? So as soon as I got, and, the, and I knew it was successful because the person, um, our friend Matthias, Matthias Schelin, the, the person whom Matthias is sort of half named after, came up to me months later, because he read somewhere in some load screen, his, Matthias' bio, and he goes, hey man, how did you, how did you, of course he said it with a heavy Swedish accent, he said, hey man, how did you pick where Matthias is from? And I went, oh, and I told him, he goes, that's fucking amazing, dude, because that is actually, like, it's perfect. Like, it's perfect. It's kind of a redneck place, and he's kind of a, uh, you know, uh, who gives a shit, blow stuff up kind of guy. Probably didn't go to college. He goes, I don't know, I don't know, man, it was perfect. And I was like, there you go. Like, it's, uh, it's purely a coincidence. But, um, so we just need a place uh, that is... Wow, I like this guy. Vinci Vincianus. Lu Lucius Annius Vincianus, a Roman senator during the princi Principate. He is best known for his involvement in the assassination of Caligula and a rebellion against Claudius. Uh, so, yeah. Specializes in law. So if you meet if you meet a really well to do lawyer, you know what college they came from. Well, look, I, I don't want to overstate my case. And there's always a danger, once you've got a platform, that your opinions will be perceived as having somehow authority beyond your own idiosyncrasies. Um, if you want to build a world where you literally just make all the names up, and they're just cool names that you've made up, go for it. I think that can be awesome. Um, I have friends of mine that do that, that their world is literally just a bunch of names that they have made up from scratch. 
They have no bearing on the real world. They don't look like, they don't look like real world names. In fact, they explicitly look like not real world names. And I think that just like anything else, when you start doing that, it's gonna be terrible and cheesy and dumb. And after years of practice, you'll get to the point where you can make up cool sounding, authentic, original names. Some of my favorite science fiction novels and stuff, named, and fantasy novels, names were just made up. Who cares? That's just not my style. That's all. Not my style. Not my style as an author. And and again, you, you heard the story about Sheer and the planet. It's, a, it's almost like a, um, it's a tool can also be a crutch. Having a process, which I have, it's basically I have a process. I have a process that I've used and it's fertile and works for me and I know that process and it almost never lets me down. So of course I then want to, I want to promote that process in my mind and imagine that because it works for me, therefore it's important another, no it's not, it's just mine. It's just my process. Another, the diametrically opposed process is equally good if it helps you make names for your world. That's all. That's all. Um, so physics makes a point. I would argue that, so physics is basically saying, your mom, and she's pissed. My mom, my mom, what, I'm sorry, mom, what did I do? Is it the hair? I apologize. I know you like it short. Um, you think I look like a hippie? Um, physics is saying, but you have an audience because for at least in some part, you make dope shit. And that's a little bit true. It's a little bit true. I think mostly I have an audience because I want people to be a dungeon master. But I think part of that is when I throw out ideas for stuff or how I do things, people are like, some people, not everybody, but some people are like, that is cool. That thing Matt said is cool. I want cool stuff like Matt's stuff in my game. But that's only because I got, I, I've been doing this thing for a long time and I got better at it. If I had been doing the same thing, but in a completely different way, if I had a completely different process, one that focused on just making up ridiculous sounding names, by the time I got here, I would be able to make up cool, for instance, I think my dragons have cool names, Orvo Sortiax. I think my dragons have cool names, completely made up, completely made up, because I'm trying to evoke the idea that they're this alien, these alien things from another culture, they're not based on any human thing ever, not based on any human thing at all. So, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't want people to think that this thing I do where I'm like, let's go find a Roman senator and I don't want a good popular one. I want an obscure one, right? I, hope, I don't want people to think, oh, that's the way you do it. I don't even want people to think that's necessarily a good way. It is a way I have used a long time. And so for me, it's sort of a crutch. That's why I like having dwarves and dragonborn that have Names that have nothing to do with it because it gives me the opportunity to throw off those crutches and just make shit up and see what happens. You're gonna have a good time, Adam Gardens. That is a, one of my, uh, Into the Spider-Verse is one of the best movies I've seen in the past several years. I do actually, Apostle O, I have it often. I have a hard copy of it and I have it in PDF, legally in PDF. I don't, I don't think NetHack has anything to do with, Tarna's not mine, but Tarna's from uh, Heavy Metal. All right, so I feel like we're actually started to kind of get a little bit close to the end of the stream, but there's more stuff I want to know. Um, Vinci, I feel like I need to start bolding stuff so we can read it. We still don't know about the College of Statescraft and Diplomacy. We were looking up where does the name Milan come from because we're going to name it after that. One theory holds that the Latin name Mediolanum comes from the Latin words medio, meaning in the middle, and planus, meaning the plane. Planus. I often, a lot of my Latin pronunciation is cod Latin, but if it was good enough for people in the 1800s, it's good enough for me. Um, this is not a great uh, this is not an incredibly fertile Bardus, Langobardus, Lom Lom uh, Lombardy, Lombardy, which I think I know how to pronounce, which is a region. And I can't call it Bardus College because people think it's a Bard's College. So that's where I draw the line. Uh, what it was a good king omen a sorcerer no he was he had he had a wizard 
I'm trying to think, let's see, um... List of cities in medieval Italy, or medieval Venice. Well, actually, let's look at Venice, actually. Let's check out, check out Venice. Venexia. I like that. Venexia? I like that. Venexia College. But would a Venexia? Venezia, Venezia, probably. That's getting actually close to something like Venice. Um, no, good King Omen was actually good. He was a he was a, he was a good dude who wanted to bring the rule of law and bring justice, and 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 thought that the law should should serve the people. Good King Omen does not. He was he was he was a good king. Uh, the Venezia College, that's actually maybe a little bit too on the nose. Let's take a look here. Etymology, thank God for Wikipedia. The meaning of the word is uncertain. Great. Fantastic. Connection with the Latin word Venetus, meaning the color sea blue is also possible. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I mean, because it's uh, by the sea. So there was probably once a city in this area, maybe even before capital was a city, there might have been smaller. Venezia? I think, yeah, maybe you're right. Venezia. Venezia. Venezia College. There we go. Thank you. Um, it can literally mean whatever whatever language means, but uh, my players won't know that. Do your campaigns always move rightwards in time from previous campaigns? No. Oh, have you guys seen? Fuck, do I still have this? Stand by. I'm gonna go rummage for a second. Let's see if I can, because you guys are gonna. This is relevant to the stream. It's relevant to world building. Um, stand by. I apologize. Um, what I'm looking for is not here. But I found my 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 blip dual poop statue that I made. <laughs> Forgot, I, I didn't I didn't know that I couldn't I didn't know where this was. Uh, I spent the entire weekend shaving off Barbie's panties so they wouldn't be. <laughs> Hello. What do you mean, what the hell? This is a <laughs> it's a blip doop statue that came to life and attacked the, attacked the players. That I made. I made this. You can see the, you can see the, the actual Barbie color here. There we go. <laughs> Look, man. It's not my fault they fought blip doop poop. But definitely when this statue came to life, they were like... Um, I also found some blub blub dice I didn't know I had. So what was I looking for? Uh, I'll see if I can find. Oh, blip doop fell over. It's not the first time. Um, so this is a website. It's a product that I bought. So hopefully you guys can see this. Where's? Yeah. So I have one of um, Europe. Right. So this is. You ready for that? You guys are gonna love this. Huge impact on my on my naming thing, right? So this is a map of it's a tiny little chunk of a larger map that um, this isn't really a patch, Oz Taj. This is an actual song done by a DJ probably in uh, you know in Ableton, and it is translated because all these words that we use to name things all meant something in some language. Uh, 
So Northern Ireland, actually, if you translated Ireland into English, would be Northern Westland, right? Land of, the land of, that should be probably strangers, I imagine. The Darkwater Fort, Bridge Place, right? Oxenford, right? And there's Oxford, right? There's Oxenford. Darkwater, I don't know, it's Darkwater, Temp, River, River, <laughs> see? What's that name? It's called River. What do we name it after? What do we name that? That's where the northern folk live. And you, 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 when you look at maps of, uh, it's a, it's, I'll put a link to the thing. It's a great, these, I've got a couple of these maps. And I wish I could show them to you. But actually, this is probably better, right? This is probably better. Right? The River Avon just means the River River. Because what happens is, these people come and conquer this place. And they just hear the natives calling that thing Avon. And they go, oh, that must be what they call that river. And it's like, no, that's the, just their word for river. But you didn't know that. So you call it the River Avon, right? But also, you, you, these people conquer these people. And so they end up calling this place what these people call it. But they speak different languages. So these people call that, oh, that's the land where the, that's the land that where everybody seems really tall from over there. And so these people end up calling this something that translates into land of the tall people. But these people, the, the conquerors don't know that. They just call it, you know, much like, much like what may be the origin of, uh, of uh, yeah. So here's, um, there's a world map one. Is this the same one? Or is it just loading? Here we go. So here's America. What does Mexico mean? It means navel of the moon. So then this is the moon navel gulf. Right? California is the land of the successor. Right? I don't know if it, it might, there's, yeah. So hopefully you folks, welcome to the stream, everybody. <coughs> this is the juice. World building, what's that? Well, this is part of it, right? Is understanding how names got to be the names. <clears throat> the more you understand how names came to be, the more power you have as a dungeon master to invent names. Does that make sense? So I've said this a lot. The United States of the home ruler, America, Amerigo Vespucci. <clears throat> the Mississippi probably means great water. A lot of these things, we don't know what they mean. So the people who made this map had to kind of pick something because we don't know. I don't understand you. Is that real? Is that real? What is that? Is that that's not Belize. What is that? Um, it's not Nicaragua because I know what Nicaragua is. Oh, well, it just says Nicaragua. That's fine. But agua, I'm pretty sure Nicaragua means fresh water or something like that. Um, and then Caracas just is, might be named after a person. Right? Actually, Constantinople and Istanbul are basically the same word, just permuted over time. Oh, the Yucatan. The Yucatan, according to this, means I don't understand. What do you what do you call that? Yucatan. Yucatan? Correct. <laughs> I do, correct. I, do, I, you, I yes, I do not understand you. Right. Anyway. Dooby 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 dooby. This is just a super inspiring song for me because. I could, it, it's one of those things that could be done with modular. There's nothing this, that's happening in the song that I couldn't do. Um, but mo see, those of you who are familiar with the Time Rider, almost all the music you've heard from the Time Rider is generative ambient music because I need it to be generative and ambient so it can play for hours while we're doing a stream. Uh, I have very rarely actually sat down to use these tools to compose a song like the one you're listening to. I did not make this song, but it's inspiring too. So. Now you guys get it. You can buy these maps. I bought a couple of them, and I would show them off to new employees, new friends. I'd be like, have you seen this? And be like, holy crap. And people just want to pour over it, right? But it teaches you a lot about how things get the names they get. Um, and that being said, it's almost 1.30, and I'm starving. We started streaming at 11 o'clock. So the college, we're not done yet, though. Wait. Right. We have uh, the College of ISA, is, uh, which a lot of people just call for City Hall. Educates the clergy. Kosimi College, named after the founder of House Alvaro. Ar art, architecture, civic engineering. I like that. We have the Benicia College of, like, almost like Benicio. We have the, uh, or the Benicia. The Benicia College is probably how it's pronounced. Of statecraft and diplomacy. This is a very prestigious.
Do you require your players to comply with your naming rules? The Unvisible Man, the Uninvisible Man asks, do you require your players to comply with your naming rules? What do you folks think? You folks should know me. Steve Voss just asked a really good question. No, of course not. No, 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 no. No, I don't. I don't care what my. If a player, if I, I, I will. If a player came up with what I thought was a like, for instance, um, Matt Matt O'Driscoll's Dragonborn Bard is named Jezcress because somebody in the game was like, "Oh, Jesus Christ," and he was like, "That's not my name. Actually, maybe it is my name." And so he went with Jezcress. Which I'm like, fine, whatever, that's fine. Jezzer, Jezcress. Um, which college did... Have you read any Scott Lynch? No, but didn't Scott Lynch used to be on RPG Net with me? Oh, Driscoll, that's him, that's him. There, there he is right there. I might, I might, the just, if, if somebody came up with... Some, so Matt O'Driscoll said he wanted to be a dragonborn that had uh, feathers. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he was like, oh, I just thought it would be neat. Like, right, didn't, 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 uh, aren't dinosaurs, blah, blah, and he had this, I don't remember what his thought process is, although, I mean, you might be able to see it because we recorded it. Um, I don't think it's a different Scott Lynch. I think that actually is the same dude. There was a, there was a Scott Lynch on RPG Net who got a book deal, um, and wrote the Gentleman Bastard series. Um, and I was like, okay, I was like, all right, so if you, if you are a dragonborn with feathers, then that means you're probably like a third generation dragonborn. And each generation is getting um, evolutionarily differentiated. So there's all this differentiating happening. And old traits, weird traits are starting to manifest. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, he, was, he, he and I were both on RPG at the same time. <laughs> so. So what college did Ajax graduate from? Well, obviously... He graduated from War College. Right? Ah! Uh, so what's a good name? Like, where did Caesar go to school? Born into a patrician family. Head of the family at 16. That's interesting. I don't know if I knew that. Uh, have you ever given any details on Zavixia? I don't even know who that is right now off the top of my head. That must be a name I made up for something. Tells you a lot about my process. Oh, is she the um, Lady of Fire? Is she the Queen of Brass? Yeah, I got there. Ha, ah, Canadian lemur. Um, what her motives are? Uh, she's an adventurer. She's kind of a chaotic... She's either, like, lawful, neutral, or chaotic good uh, adventurer. She's kind of like, you know, Richard the Lionheart, in a sense, wants to go off and wants to... Doesn't really care... Doesn't Hasn't ever really cared about ruling the city of Brass. Uh, it's kind of... It's a hereditary home for her. And wants to take her army and go across the multiverse and, and be like Robin Hood. So the War College, the, uh, the College of Strategy and Tactics, which we're going to come up with a name for. Um, the name of which I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about this right now, uh, but we will make a note that I mean, and there are people that are proud. There are people that are like, this guy's going to conquer the world. This guy's going to conquer the world. Of course he's. Of course he is. He's a graduate of our college. And remember that conquering the world is not something that people automatically assume is bad, right? We do. We do. We think that somebody who wants to conquer the world is a madman, but they don't. Um, so Cassini College, 
I like this. We've made a lot of progress here. We need tier college, but there's something else I want to do before we're done. Um, we certainly have enough colleges, right? And some of them have names, and some of them are known by other things. They're he might be a, he might be a member of the Order of the Golden Cross. It'd be funny if Ajax and Kenway are both members of the same order. So I feel like I want to know a little bit more about here we can about this dude. So Duke Prospero, Duke Prospero. Um, he's probably in his mid-50s. Well, let's do know about this guy. Do we know that they, they had the Imperial University, they have their estate. What was their other what was their other thing that they had? The theater. Right. Oh, one of these colleges, probably the War College, one of these colleges is also um, the uh, What was that last song? The last song? I don't remember. It's on a playlist. Hit exclamation point playlist. Oh, Hitler physics. Hitler also Hitler sort of because this is the, he was considered he was considered a madman before we knew about the Holocaust, but he inherited a lot of the propaganda that they used against Napoleon, and uh, it was like wait hang on. <laughs> like, wait, like Churchill at one point was like, wait, 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 wait. Huge difference between Napoleon and Hitler. And it kind of worried him that people were just conflating person who wants to take over Europe or the world as madman. Because Churchill was like, no, no, that's not, that's this dude is. But that, shit, we screwed up. <laughs> but, um, What is the real one style? Yeah, he has kind of like long, flowing, shoulder-length, shoulder-length hair. Highly, highly perfumed and quaffed. quaffed. Um. Yeah, I'll be here, period. No, I have not seen the latest. Exclamation point. Okay. Um... What the hell was I looking up here? Duke Prospero, Lord of, La Lord of House Alvaro, one of the oldest families in Rome. He's a powerful wizard. He's the titular head of the College of Sorcery. Do we have a College of Sorcery, explicitly College of Sorcery? Um, I think that's... Sorry, let me, let me unfuck this. Er, there we go, now everybody can read it. Um... Okay, but now go away. Why did that unbold? Don't unbold. Rebold. Sorry, this is somewhat tedious. I apologize. Um... Also, yeah, take seriously his, his role, uh, well, actually, actually responsible for keeping
So this is this is, we're gonna replace this with this. Here we go. Takes this very seriously. There we go. Um, what's the, what if? What is the name of the theater? What is the name of the theater that is the greatest theater in the world? Greatest theater and capital, therefore the greatest theater in the world. Because I don't know off the top of my head and I'm not super interested in going and doing a bunch of research. The dance, that's not a bad name. It's a terrible idea, Jeff, Jeff and Kate. Terrible idea. No, those are bad ideas. Actually, I like the crossroads. I think maybe like The Road. The Road would be a good name for the theater. And it was originally at a crossroads. Um, excuse me. Take it easy, Katrian. <laughs> I'm full of terrible ideas. We, I'm so I'm not, no more so than me. Um, Court's not a bad name. There was like the Rose, the Globe. Um... Hello, Lappen Kaiser. Welcome aboard. Well, Harlequin Red Sky, I don't want to sort of abuse the privilege of that of that of that idea. Uh... I like the I like the road, although I think we can do better. The mirror, the mirror, I like that. The mirror, I like that. Well, let's write that down. I like the mirror. So, we're learning a lot about capital. Although at this rate, it's going to take a long time before uh, the players, we're, considering we're going to start playing this month, and I think it's going to take three to five weeks for the players to get there. The next one of these we do may have to be the docks. Because we've got a lot to learn about. I also want to learn about the law in the city. We've learned a little bit. Lappin Kaiser, thank you for the subject. You're like, I finally made a stream. I have no idea, John of Phoenix. I have zero interest in that level of detail. Well, I imagine it depends on what neighborhood they're going into. Admiral Yake, Jack. Well, acrylic masks, I think, I think, so acrylic masks asked a good question. Is magic illegal on the docks? I think probably it is. Um, well, Lappin Kaiser, if you're a dungeon master, then you are an inspiration to me. Uh, I, uh, so somebody asked a good question. Is magic, acrylic masks ask, is magic illegal on the docks? I think there's probably one region of the docks. Can you guys see this? I want to make sure that, yeah. I think there's probably one region in the docks where all the laws of capital are enforced. And the rest of it is kind of like the Wild West. And so this is gonna be a big part of, um, this is gonna, are magic items illegal? Uh, it depends on the item. No, not, 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 magic items aren't illegal, but certain things certainly are. So weapons are not allowed in the city. You can't just, unless, unless you're an off, unless you're a knight, right? That's, there's a law that says only bonded knights are allowed to wear uh, weapons in the city. Unless you're a knight, you can't, so the so the chain of Acheron is a mercenary company, right? And they are are they're all soldiers, and they're I don't know how many of them. There's over three hundred of them at the start of the campaign. It's not clear how many of them are going to make it to capital, but 
there's definitely going to be more than just the heroes. The five heroes are the senior officers of the chain. And then there are, there's like um, 10 or 11 junior officers. And the, the junior officers each then command. Uh, so you have this notion of this like pyramid, right? Um, just how big is capital? It's, it's big. Not even a dagger? No. I mean, I imagine a knife. I imagine like a knife of a certain size or a certain weight maybe, like, you know, because obviously you need to have cleavers and things like that. Um, so you have to be, a, so that's one of the ways that we're going to transition from we are the guys in charge of this mercenary company to we are a party of adventurers, is that getting, getting the, um, be, part of the early arrival at Capital Getting from the docks to the rest of the city is, is going to be the process of these guys becoming knights, knights of the city, sponsored sponsored by whichever major house, either the guilds or the, or the noble houses, one, whichever great house they kind of sign up with. And they'll be like, well, we've got an allotment. We've got a quota. There's only You can only make so many knights per year, and we've got you know six, five or six left, so we'll make you guys knights. Sorry, you're going to have to leave your, you know, and that way we can limit... The, this mercenary company's access to the entire city. So that's going to be part of it. Are the laws posted in the streets? No, no more so than they are here. You're just supposed to know. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. How do people learn a law? Same way they do in the real world. Oh, they uh, Car Bullock, he probably has a license. You know, the f uh... So somebody asked, like, if, if there's no magic in the city, it's not that there's no magic. It's this, that magic is regulated. Think of it this way. Magic is regulated. That's all. It's regulated the way we regulate a lot of things here in the real world. And the fact that it's regulated means there are people who don't obey the regulations, and it also means the people who are doing the regulation, they know about some of that. So somebody like the head of the RASP, he, he, has, a, he has a license to, to run this stuff. But it also means that license could be taken away, right? And, but probably it would require a vote of the council or something like that, and so one nobleman can't do it. Even the nobleman in charge of running this stuff. So, uh, yeah, you guys get it. Well, they're going to start off in the docks. Pure Glass Cannon asks, do you ever leave people, places, organizations undefined? Well, yes, only because it's impossible to figure everything out. You just have to be okay with that. You just have to be okay with that. So we know what the theater is. Probably have to come up with the name of the estate. I want to just know more about this guy. Um, theater was an actor uh, wings of janitor I asked them if they would they want to play in and I said campaign in a big city and they were like that sounds cool if they want to leave they can I'm not going to force them to stay in the city and in fact there are maybe good reasons for them to leave the city Sierra Rocks, well, I don't know, not, I don't, I, I'm, I'm sure I have. Canadian Lemur, no, not yet. If I do a good job, so Canadian Lemur asks, do you have any ideas about who the players are likely to work with? If I'm a good dungeon master, um, not in the same way. Divine Magic is not regulated in the same way. Because um, the, there's a huge difference between Divine Magic, and that is the gods have to be okay with it. You don't get just get to prayer. You don't just get to cast spells because you feel like it. You have to obey the tenets of a god. Um, actually, you know what? Um,
You like that? Belong to the same fraternal order as Ajax. Why? This is one of the problems with this program, is it does not... Um, Belong to the same fraternal order as Ajax and, and was there at the same time. Knows him personally. Duke Prospero knows Ajax personally. And is like, you don't understand. This guy can win. Like, I was at school learning this, that, and the other thing, these guys, but all the professors knew this guy, he, he had it in him. He had it in him to do it. You guys aren't paying attention. Um, it's going to be down to, and not only, no one else, I can tell you right now, no one else in Orden, maybe the Pharaoh, maybe the Pharaoh. I've known many, I've never met the Pharaoh personally, but I know his daughter and the Pharaoh has the power to maybe stop him, but it looks, it's looking bad. If the Pharaoh doesn't stop him, no one in the Agar can do it. No one in Corsair can do it. He's going to win. It's up to us. It's up to us. And the guilds are like, the guilds are just reinforcing every prejudice this guy has. He thinks that women can't be in charge. Their brains would overheat, right? He thinks that no true Riohan can rule because they're not raised in the nobility. They don't have R. And of course, then they do everything exactly as he predicts. They don't listen to him. They don't take it seriously. They only care about feathering their own nest. And he's like, this is why we're all doomed. And he's not going to just show up and be content to, to rule over us. He's going to wipe out the entire command structure of capital. Anyone with any power. Look what he's done everywhere he goes. He hasn't even really started empire building. He's still in the conquering phase. He's doing exactly the same thing the man who founded the Kalian Empire did. The first thing that guy did was he conquered. Then he built. If he had only conquered and then failed, he would have gone down in history as a genocidal fuckhead. That's not what he did. He conquered and then he built. And that's what Ajax is doing. And he's going to kill all of us. Anyone with any power in the city is either going to be dead. They're either going to give him... His, they're either going to take his silver or his lead, or his steel, I guess. Right? And this is, Prospero is the oracle, man. He's the only guy that knows this. The other nobles believe him. The other nobles are like, you would be a fool not to listen to the house of Alvaro. So, is he, a, is he prejudiced? Yes. Is he a misogynist? Absolutely. He, he doesn't think there should be women on the stage. He, he remembers the good old days when it was all men and boys doing stuff. At the same time, anyway, does the chain have an opinion of Ajax? They will in February. Whoa, Seraphim, more subs from Seraphim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, 10 gifts, awesome. Perry Hawthorne says, if he took over, he would even take out the guilds who are fine with him. They have power. He doesn't give a, she doesn't, he doesn't even know who they are. He doesn't care. They have power. That is not allowed. That is not allowed. The only legitimate power in Ajax's empire is Ajax. At least for now. Then he'll... That thing may change. But Vasloria's been... Vasloria is an entire region as large as Western Europe. And it has already been reduced to... It's gone from being... And that's just, well, the elves are almost in charge at this point because it's just forests and the roads are in disrepair because he completely obliterated the command structure of Vasloria. There is literally only one church in the entire region that he left standing kind of as a token for the free city of Black Bottom because those guys wanted to govern themselves. He's like, okay, that's fine. But apart from that, the hawk lords took out, they bombed all the churches. They killed all the dukes. They killed all the dukes' families. I have not salty sea, salty sailor sea. I have guaranteed that they will. Right. So the guilds are like, who cares who's in charge? And Lord Prospero is like, you don't understand. You're not listening. And of course they're not listening. Of course I'm not going to listen to you. You don't believe I have. I should have the right to exist. Conflict. Uh, no way.
What is his wife's name? What is his wife's name? Oh wait, he's not asking us. Well, not unless you are a medieval Florentine, no. Uh, let's look at the Book of Names. This is a copy I bought. Mm, ner, 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 uh, Welsh, no. Britain, no. Asia, Europe. Um, Flemish names are often really good for this kind of stuff, but Spanish? Oh, didn't we have this problem before where there was like not like Italy because it wasn't incorporated or some shit? Leonor? I like Leonor. Violante. I like Violante. Violante. You guys were here. You guys were probably. Does Ajax share in his? Uh, uh, well, he's not a Riohan, Perry Hawthorne, nor is he a Riohan noble. Um, and and there are not many places in my world that are classically patriarchal the way sort of America is right now. Um, it what? It was, it was mostly because he thought it was, Ajax is conquering, but then he's gonna build. And he wanted to make sure that trade didn't completely collapse. So he, he, gave, the, he gave Black Bottom, Black Bottom's like a free city. Um, uh, yes, Trebor. Yeah, it was like the people, the people, are, the people who make sure the plants, I couldn't remember Gardener, I couldn't remember Gardener. I was like, the people who make sure the plants don't take over are here, the plant fighters. Um, where is Ajax from? Ajax is from Phaedros. He's he's a he's a he's a, a Phaedron. He's from he's an Iomian. He's from the same place that um, that the Kaelian Empire is from. So I feel like we're almost done for the day. We've done a lot, and I feel like I've I have provided good value for du dungeon masters who want to want inspiration for world building. Chancellor of the University. He has a lot of titles. Um, Joe's cool blue, blue Joe's cool Joe Cool's blues just gifted a sub. Thank you, a tier two sub. I don't even know what that is. I mean, I think that's probably true, Harlequin Red Sky. I think he definitely was there. There was a there was an empire. He had, he he looked up to some. He has there was a. I, I came up with a name for him based on some research. I don't have it off the top of my head, but he looks up to. The, I don't know if he looks up to Julius Caesar or if he looks up to Caesar Augustus. But he looks up to one of those guys, and he wants to do. He wants to be them, and he's going to do it. He's going to do it, largely because of his partnership with Mortem. Mortem is the one that figured out how to raise a, elf, a flying elf city. That's one of the Sky Celestials. One of the, not, they're not called uh, one of the um, Sylvan Sylvan Celestials. So he's got his own floating city, and that gives him. It's hard to fight that dude. It's hard to fight that dude on his own terms. Did Ajax call? Uh, yes. His name is Ajax. Ajax is his real name. It is a real name from the real world. M no, I knew, I knew tier two was more money, which I appreciate. But I don't know what you get for it. Uh, I feel like Twitch does a pretty poor job of giving people options. Uh, so I feel like we're done. Let's just go over what we did. We just I just wanted to focus. We did something earlier today, didn't we? Yeah, we, we want to know, we're going to, at some point, probably, I'm going to have to prioritize things, right? Because what we did today, that kind of planning is going to continue even after the stream launches. Even after they get to Capital, we're still going to be world building. We're still going to be world building for, for months, if not years. Maybe not all of it's going to be on stream, but definitely before they get to Capital, I want to know how people in Rioja talk. So that's something to do. Um, but then I said, I want to know about House Alvaro, and we could do one of these, obviously, for each of the great houses. We know that Duke Prospero is, we know these guys are one of the most powerful families. They're probably the most powerful family in Rioja. Um, Duke Prospero is the head of the College of Sorcery. 
and they, their charge, the thing that grants them their charter is the responsibility for policing magic in the city. He takes that very seriously because he, he, no one in li living memory knows this, but as a descendant of the person who first uh, was granted governorship of the university, he knows what it was like back when anybody could use magic in those in, in tents. Morton probably did, that's probably where they met, Axon Hill. Ajax and Mortem almost certainly met at the university. Uh, he's the. I, I imagine he is that. He is the head of. There is a. There is a ton of. There's like nephews and nieces and grandchildren. It's a huge family. Um, firmly opposed to the power of the guilds, believes they represent an existential threat to Rio and culture. He's wrong. He's 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 wrong. But he doesn't know that. Um, but he definitely is right that they do not see Ajax as a threat. That's a problem. He sponsors the mirror. He pays. He pays. It's a, ch a charity. He pays. He doesn't own it. He pays for the mirror, which is the greatest theater in the world right now. Um, loves attending the theater. The mirror is where opera was invented. The first operas were staged at the mirror. In fact, the mirror was probably built because there was some composer who wanted to stage this great thing, but there was no, and they're like, I'll build it for you. I'll build it for you. It'll come with all the crap you need built in. Uh, married, he was an actor, and a good one, and married an actor. Belonged to the same fraternal order as Ajax, literally knows him, went to school with him. Um, the university has many colleges, we knew that. Um, we know about the College of St. Issa, which is where clerics go, the uh, Presidi Hall, is what it was originally called. Cosimi College, named after the founder of House Alvaro. That's where you go if you're, a, if you're an artist or an engineer, uh, a civic engineer. Uh, Benetzia College. This is the magic school. State, statescraft and diplomacy and also the greatest wizards go there. And there's not, no one, no one in Rioja would ask, well, what does being a wizard have to do with statescraft and diplomacy? And they'd be like, what do you mean, what does that have to do with it? Wizards, uh, wizards are masters of knowledge and all of college is all about learning things. They go hand in hand. Um, my voice is starting to kind of go. Are you considering a campaign setting? I mean, listening. I mean, listen, sorry, you can tell it's, it's getting late for me. Um, if this gets robust enough, yeah, we'll publish it, right? Um, maybe we went to a Kickstarter for it, maybe we'll just pay for it. That, that would require a very successful company, a uh, very successful company. Um, but that would be nice. You know, have art. I think, I think the number one thing, that, you know, a, a campaign setting for Capital would, ha would have to be like 2021 or 2022. And it would be taking all my notes and then shoring up and maybe even paying freelancers to help shore up all the stuff I haven't gotten to yet and make, you know, unique specializations, right? There's probably different ways to be thieves and different ways to be wizards in the, uh, in the school, in this place. Um, that would be what that, yeah, that would be what it would be, Sierra Rocks. But, it, but you can only do Matt Colville version of Tolis after you've done a lot of fucking world building, right? Um, the Venetianus Venetianus College, named after the Kalin Empire founded. That's the law. A lot of the lawyers went to that college. Probably have their own kind of thing, signaling. We know there's a couple other colleges. Ajax graduated from the War College. That's also also probably the college that has the um, prince's official CIA inside it. We know what this district is called. Uh, it's called the Blues, Blue Hill, the Hills. We know that the, because it's called the Blues, that's why nobles are called Blue Bloods. Because keep in mind, this district, this purple place here, has the highest concentration of nobility anywhere in the world. Because while there are nobles living all over Rioja, this is where people from all over the world send their noble children to get educated. Make sense? And we know that use of the magic, use of the magic, use of magic throughout the city is prohibited unless you're a graduate of the university. You have to have your ring. You have to have your class ring. And different colleges have different classes and they probably change every year in tiny ways to show what year you graduated. Um, uh, it's not illegal to be a sorcerer in the city, but if you start using magic, you're gonna, somebody, you have to be registered and bonded. When the cops come up to you and go, what are you doing, man? You have to be able to, it's, yours maybe isn't a class ring. Maybe it's a black ring or a blank ring because you didn't go to school, but Otherwise, you're going to the who's gal. 
those those guys are probably wizards. They might be. I like the idea that they might be dragon. They might be gemstone dragonborn that are kind of immune to magic, but not immune to psionics. That would require me doing some work on how psionics and magic. I I think of them as being two completely different things. So like display like I don't think dispel magic works on psionics, but there may be good reasons for it to do so. If that makes sense. Um, if a, if if you are a cleric and you want to cast a spell and you're not you know on 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 the church grounds, you have to have, don't, you you should be able to produce your holy symbol for the same way. And if you don't, and if you then it's not the cops aren't necessarily going to arrest you. They're going to go to the head of your church and say, "Will you do something about this guy?" And they'll be like, "We'll take care of it." And if they don't take care of it, then they can get taxed or they can get fined or whatever. Perry Hawthorne, thank you for the gifts. And that's what we've figured out today, and that was a good world building stream. And I really, really feel as though we did a good job. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that, and as is often true when we do one of these streams, I'm excited about capital, I'm excited about going here, and I'm super excited for you folks because the players don't know anything about this. The players do not watch these streams. So what you're gonna get to see me translate this knowledge into the presentation of capital and people they meet and stuff like that, and you guys are gonna know a lot more about this city. Oh, have I told you guys something? No, Anna's not watching. Anna doesn't. Anna only, Anna only watches this stuff if she's here. Uh, Jerry watches almost all the content I make. Um, so, I don't think Lars has ever really watched. Um, I'm not worried about getting it done in time. I almost know, the only thing we need to do before we actually get to Capital is figure out what's going on here in the docks. Because that's where the players are going to start. Um, I would say that's accurate. Or Philip of Macedon. I would say that's accurate. The planet is called Orden, because Ord made the world. No, I don't. I don't require. I think sometimes, yeah, I don't require the players. I don't require the players. That was a literal Freudian slip. I didn't. I don't require the my, the people who work here to watch our content. They've got jobs to do. Um, so I, I maybe actually, John of Phoenix, maybe. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. So we definitely want to get the docs taken care of, and we definitely want the language and culture thing taken care of. So those are probably going to be the next two streams. Um, B, Kyle B, we're wrapping up. So I, this is an idea I just came up with last night. I fundamentally believe that they're, they're well, that's one of the things we're going to find out, Steve Voss. Um... Perry Hawthorne is gifting people subs left and right. Thank you. I don't, I think that if you're going to stream and you're, the, 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 the promise of streaming is interaction. If you're not interacting, then it being live, how do you know it's live? How do you know that wasn't pre-recorded? What would be the difference? So I want to make sure there's some kind of interaction. And we don't know what that is, but we're thinking about it. We have some ideas. And there, there's, there's a lot of ideas. But I also want the, the viewers to have some influence on what's happening. And I know a lot of people find that distasteful. And maybe it's because it's the way it's been implemented in the past. The notion that like, oh, if we get this many subs, then the, the players will get this cool thing for this adventure or whatever. Okay, I get that. That's, that's, that's gimmicky. And I don't like gimmicky stuff. I am also really distrustful of gimmicky stuff. But that notion that the p people watching should be able to have some kind of influence on the game. Maybe not live, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's uh, you know, depending on what happens, depending on what the viewers, depending on the viewership, that influences the next session. But we just start from first principles. And the first principle is that the viewers and maybe the, the simplest metric that is that helps us be a healthy company is subscribers i don't know uh like the number of people that subscribed or whatever but I, I the idea i hit upon last night talking about this is that uh well dispel says don't do what acquisitions inc did i don't know what they did but if i think it's a good idea we're gonna do it because it's my ideas that run things unfortunately which we're stuck with unfortunately um, but it won't be because they did it. It'll be because I derived it. But I don't think I, I don't think that's what's in danger. This is all I know right now. And we literally just came up with this last night. So I'm not promising we're going to do this. And it's not a solution. It's just an idea. It's an approach. That the viewers represent the citizens of capital. 
that how many people watch or maybe how many people subscribe or maybe how people react to things in chat determine what the people of capital think about the chain. And we'll tie that, if I'm a good designer, we tie that into renown. And there's a stat called renown. It can be gained and lost. It can be used to do things. And that if this stream had a lot of subs, if a lot of people subscribed to this stream, then whatever the chain did, this stream, a lot, shitload of people heard about it. And then I let's watch chat back and see what a chat think. Because that's, you know, fame, re renown is one thing, but then there's also fame and infamy. Maybe the people in chat didn't like it. Maybe the, maybe, maybe the citizens of capital are turning against the chain. That's all, that's the extent of my knowledge. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That the people watching sort of represent the citizens of capital. And it's not that the citizens of capital are watching the chain. It's that the more robust the stream is or the more people subscribe, the more, it's like a force multiplier for the chain's renown. Like, anyway. So, that's it. No idea how we're going to implement it. Not worried about that. Going to figure that out later. So, it's 2 o'clock. I'm going to go get something to eat. Well, we might just watch. You'd be surprised. Uh, the one is she. Is that when we used to stream code names, we would often play code names. And then this kind of tells you how dumb it is to do something and not be interacting with chat. Because what would we do when we were done playing code names? We'd literally all come into my office and sit here and watch chat. It tells you that what we want is we even we watching even I'm sorry even we playing crave that interaction and we weren't getting it. So. Abby Tate's will try. It won't be something we do at launch. It won't be something that happens at launch because A, we need time to figure it out and B, they're not going to be in capital at the beginning of the game. Well, Exoskeleton, don't forget that my players stood by and watched when King Edmund, uh, King Edmund, when Lord Edmund uh, was decapitated and they did nothing. So don't be surprised if the players make decisions that the group does not agree with. I think it's about 50-50 there, by the way. The players won't have access to chat during the game. Uh, well, I think there's a way to do that that would be... I think there's a way to do that that would be... We'll figure that out. I'm committed to figuring that out. All right, so that's the stream, folks. Let's go back to the Q&A. We've been putting up with me being Tiny Mac for a while. Um... Well, I mean, sir, here's, so anytime, if I like, this happened, uh, this used to happen in game design all the time, where someone goes, I think it would be a cool idea if we did this. And someone else goes, well, that's a bad idea because this will never work. And you're like, if that's your opinion, then you're obviously not imagining it the way I'm imagining it because the way I imagined it was not stupid. If it had been, I wouldn't have suggested it. So, uh, why not start in capital? You literally taught me in media ray. Well, what, are the, what does the one have to do with the other? We're definitely going to start in media ray. So there was a friend of mine who used to work at Blizzard, and they had, in, in his group of designers at Blizzard on the project they were on, he would say, it's not the dumb thing you're thinking of, it's the cool thing I'm thinking of. Right? So I think there are ways and there are ways. Um, and if, it, if we try something that doesn't work, look, I, one of the things I enjoy is trying stuff, and if it, we try it and it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Done. So we're done. I'll see you folks tonight. Some of you folks, I'm sure. Sometime between 5 and 7 p.m. we will play some NetHack for a couple of hours and we'll figure out uh, what happens to Tarna. Tarna is getting to the point where she uh, might actually ascend. And uh, not tonight, but, you know. Uh, we did a lot. I'm looking forward to sh the stream launching. Next week you'll get a video announcing when and where. Uh, until then... Be seeing you.